All right. It's green on this end. YouTube says it's green. Please go live. Please go live. You're attempting to go live. Too we are soon. attempting to go live. Okay. Live before. <laughs> there we go. We appear to be live at this time without swears. Good morning, everybody. Great. Hey, what's up? All right. Okay. Fantastic. Sorry, folks. We had a bit of a false start this morning, but now we're on to the real start. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Less swear this time. Fewer swearing this time. <laughs> right. Still a lot. Oh, but... yeah. Less, less swears, fewer swearing. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Paul is absolutely correct. We yeah. got we got to hone in. We need those art, artisanal farm-to-table swears. Locally sourced. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Cruelty-free. <laughs> cruelty free swears is interesting because <laughs> organic. I mean, those were cruelty free swears. They were that you did. Non, non I like to think that all swearing's organic. Yeah, you don't want mass market, <laughs> you know, mass produced swearing. You got to no, really get no the artisanal flair. Hmm. Right. Andy says there's weird repeats. Are people hearing weird? Yeah, that's probably it, Andy. There shouldn't be weird repeats <laughs> happen. Yeah, Amelia, give us some knock knock jokes. Those are good. Four-way knock-knock jokes. What we will need is two knock-knock <laughs> jokes, one of which I will ask Adam and the other of which Paul will why ask don't we go, Chris. Why don't we go, Okay. you say knock-knock, I say who's there. <gasps> Chris says... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 then, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. No, for it, yeah. So give us a, give us a knock-knock jokes. Knock-knock, uh, <laughs> knock-knock us. The chat's working on it. Uh, hello, the worm sponsor. Hello, Andy Aronson. Hello, Viral Kirsan Stormbringer. Hello, Amelia Ryan's meme goddess. What's up, everybody? Hello, Twitson. Hello, Ooh, Wolf, 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 Wolf. Wolf. hello, Jay Z. <laughs> everybody, say hello to Chris Burton. He's new. I'm Hi, everybody. I'm pointing at him. Be gentle with him as his first time. He's right there. Everybody, say hello to Sail. She's right here. Um, I don't believe you because she's not in the picture. She's right. You know, she's in the picture. That could what, be anything. What do you think Pixar, this is? What do you, Pixar didn't happen. What do you think this anything. is? This could be yeah. anything? Yeah. Look at the stripes. <laughs> it's not a Distinctive face. Distinctive stripes. <laughs> a f yeah, it could be a coonskin cap. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> if she weren't actually very <laughs> yeah. comfortable and happy right now, I would put her on my head like a hat. Christopher but... is well known for his, uh, All right. his where the pioneer wear. Where pioneer the heck cosplay. are the knock-knock yeah. jokes? <laughs> Hi, Andy. <laughs> Brian has a knock knock joke. <laughs> knock knock, who's there? Did you install the thing on your computer? No, I did not. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, we're classic. The, we're not doing the banana one. <laughs> uh, oh no, we're not doing no, no. Okay, fine. We'll do no. We're not. Blue. Give us a real no, knock knock not, joke. Yeah, real real one. Real joke, please. My five year old does that one plenty. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Worm sponsor. You ready? We're right. gonna go. We're gonna go the same order that we're gonna do questions, which is yeah. me, oh, okay. Adam, Paul, Braithwaite. Are you ready? All right. Cool. Okay. Yep. Knock knock. Who's there? A little old lady. Nope. See, you've messed it up already. We're trying it again. I have. Go back. We're trying yep. again. Also, we don't need this knock knock joke until we go ready on the audio. Paul, are you paying oh. attention? Yes, okay. I am. Okay, because you weren't paying attention when I explained this. The order yeah. that we're doing the knock knock joke is me, Adam, you, Braithwaite. But we're not doing the knock knock cool. joke until the audio goes live. Are you guys ready for right. the audio to go live? I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you ready with Audacity? You're looking at it? I am. Does anybody not have Audacity installed, just out of curiosity? Good. I'm going to uninstall it right no! now. No! <laughs> I'm not installed. All right. I don't have Audacity. <laughs> three, right. two, one, go. Hey, Trevor, this is Christopher. This is bullpen number three. Yep, that's it. Hey, Trevor, this is Adam. Bullpen number three. Hey, Trevor, this is Christopher. This is bullpen number three. Don't. Oh. No. Hey, Trevor. This is also Christopher. No. Bullpen number three. This is, uh, uh, yeah. That's what we're supposed to say, right? We just yeah. all say, hey, no, Trevor, this is Christopher. That's correct. I'm, I'm not lying. It, it Sorry, I is messed a up. Christopher. This is, this is also Christopher. Oh. I messed up. I didn't know we were doing that. Okay. All right. <laughs> you didn't tell me about that bit. I didn't I didn't know we were doing that. <laughs> just decided in a moment to do the bit. <laughs> it like a I, I need to be in on it. That's true. <laughs> we, need to, we need to make the shtick that annoys Christopher locked channel in Slack so right. we can like, type the funny thing is, it's a bit that I actually enjoy a ton, but it only works if I feel, if I act like it incredibly frustrates no, me. Yeah. So I have to be like, "No, you idiots!" Even though inside I'm like, "Oh yes, good." <laughs> All right, now we do the knock knock joke. Scroll back up to 11:03 in the chat, where the worm okay. sponsor has given us a knock knock joke. We're gonna go in the order mm -hmm. of me, Adam, Paul, Chris Burton. Okay. Don't 
audacity it up. I the Discord pictures or the, the, the Zoom pictures so that it is in the proper order. Yeah, mine are arranged that? in that order. Yeah, you can just drag people around. Really? Yeah. Oh. No, I can't. It says you cannot move a video. What? No, yeah, you can't do it. I guess Fist I'm did. very oh, special. Well, that, and I that did. worked. I can, I can decide to do <laughs> it You turn first. your camera off. Don't you? <laughs> so you just try. You, you click on somebody's face, hold it down, I'm doing. and, and then drag no. it around. Everybody in the chat is watching me drag Adam around. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. You actually have to hold it yeah. until it swaps. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can't just pop it there. So, okay. We'll just, wait, wait. Um, what so I shit? go there. Oh, sorry. Go there. Okay. Don't oh. swear, Paul. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> it is <Okay>. very difficult. <laughs> I have little room to talk. You this can release is so weird. Video. Okay, okay oh, there no, we I go. I messed it up. Oh. Go back. I did it. Oh, no. So <laughs> now it goes Christopher, Adam, me, Braithwaite. Correct. As as God intended. Amazing. <laughs> All right, everybody, go to the eleven oh three. We're gonna do. <sighs> we're gonna do the, the the knock knock joke. All right. Knock knock. Who's there? A little old lady. A little old lady who? Dang, all this time, I had no idea you could yodel. This is the problem with knock-knock jokes. There's five parts, not four parts. Uh, five, yeah. <laughs> mm. That's okay. All right. I think we're probably all right. We're good. We're good. Are we? <laughs> Here, we can do We can do at 11.04, Viral, Kirsan, Stormbringer, put in a knock-knock joke that only has four parts. Standy, you ready? Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, knock-knock. Who's there? Interrupting groom. Interrupting groom. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Good job. Yeah. All right. Okay. A okay. plus. Great. All right. My cat was very unhappy with that <clears throat> room. Yeah, I bet. Ooh, the stream is having buffering issues. Um, if you're having buffering issues, then what you should do is pause the YouTube video for like five seconds and then start it again. Ah, uh, but, but everybody is having the issues, so they think it is on our end. Well, let me poke at things here. Audacity is running. Let me look at my CPU. Yeah, I'm not maxed out on anything. Everything's still going good. And my internet is a thousand up and a thousand down. So, like, that's not it. Um... No, see, the YouTube feed that I'm looking at, what we're broadcasting out through YouTube is very smooth. So my guess is that YouTube server... Uh, YouTube server was having a fun time, and then it, it yeah. figured it out. <laughs> Chat it seems to be uh, ready and waiting for us yeah. to swear so that they can, they can uh, mock <laughs> us and, and poke us. Good, 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 good. That's ideal. Sorry, folks, just figure out some technical stuff here. Um, all right. Something, some, what can I do to entertain you? Yeah, uh, juggle. Um, I can't. I don't, I don't juggle, Adam. Juggle. Adam. No, I can juggle two things. A disaster. That's technically juggling, juggling isn't it? It's technically, I guess, technically. <laughs> it's very mediocre juggling. Found so if any of you are uh, into uh, minis at all, I found. Yeah, show I off went, your minis. I, I went to Menards. Minis from Menards? No. Well, so. Sort are you of, sure? Yeah. Okay. You save big money? So, so did, well, hold on, Adam. I, I think we're good cars. now. I think we're good. Everybody seems to be <laughs> caught up. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Show off your cars. Show off your cars. cars. Show off your cars. cool cars. Yeah, yeah show I, know. Off the I found these cars that are basically perfect in scale, and they were on clearance over there at Menards. Um, what do you mean when you say perfect in scale? What do you mean? The, um, they are about uh, one between one forty and one fifty, so they're essentially O scale, which is O most, scale. Yeah, I prefer. What does that mean? L scale, I, I genuinely don't Spanish know. Spanish for the scale. It's it is it, it's between one forty third and one forty eighth. It's the scale that um, like Crisis Protocol is. It's the scale that um, it's larger than D and D minis, but. Um, most most wargaming, I think, is around there. That's cool. So, That's yeah. cool. I wonder how many people in the chat know what Menards is. It's the scale that um, the the uh, Freedom Five board game is in. The oh, fun nice. thing about the store named Menards is it's not spelled 
Menards, which is the way that I just put it in the chat. Oh um, no, Menards. Because in my youth, we always had Menards. Menards. Menards was a normal store when I was growing up, but it right. only recently even came to St. Louis. Did you have Menards in D.C., Chris? Uh, no, I. Yeah. it is very unfamiliar to me. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I figured. Because it's a northern Midwest chain, I believe. Yeah. Well, I believe that they have these same cars in the like hobby store. stores. Yeah. Menards also. to Home Depot is Walmart to Target. Eh? Yeah. Sort of. Eh. Eh. But both are nationwide chains. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Menards yeah. Is, is regional, but then in terms of like, it's, ah, I would say that it's the quality isn't that much lower than Home Depot, but the prices are much better than Home Depot. Like Menards, if you know what you're looking yeah. for, you can they get They also have here. a lumber yard. Both yeah. And like, a, the, they're a little bit more robust. Yeah. So being from the northern Midwest, I would say that Menards is halfway between Home Depot and Fleet Farm. Oh, see, that doesn't help me. I'm not... yeah, but there's no Fleet Farms either. down here in St. Louis either. There's Neither are there any farm and fleets, which is a different store from Fleet Farm. Oh, wow. Sanvar put in the chat, <laughs> save big yeah. money. The, save anybody? Big money. Yeah, yeah so anybody who's guy. been to Menards knows the save big money song. Yeah. And there used to be the old guy that popped up in that little uh, thing that he's showing that would be like, at Menards! And he did all the commercials when I was a kid. He yeah. was really into Menards. Is his, is his name like Bob or something? Because he's, like, he's, the, he's the guy, right? He's not he's just like a Menards commercial guy. guy. He's the Menards guy. Bob, Bob he's Menard. like Bob yeah, Menard. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know what his name is. I don't know if he's just a spokesperson or... <laughs> It's like you're describing a childhood on an alien planet. I, I yes. have no like, like cultural touchstone oh, for this. This is great. This is great. This is a good radio too. Uh, yeah, do you is. guys want to actually start the episode? Yeah, I would rather talk about Menards for another forty minutes. We've already I think got. We could. We, I'm, sure we could. Could I'm sure we could. I'm sure we could. But here's the deal: right, we already have right. more questions for this episode than is commonly standard. Uh, okay. Here's a fun thing. That we Chris didn't talk to you about, but I think you've heard some of the bullpens we've done. By some, mm-hmm. we've done two bullpens. Have you heard them? I, I um, have. In the bullpens, the way that we do the beginning, we have the intro. It's different for each type of episode. The bullpen intro is we all say "Welcome to the bullpen" at the exact same time, and we do it like with two to five takes, so that then Trevor can edit them together in a way that sounds cacophonous. Um, <laughs> So, just as a point of of rhythm, the 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 meter for it is welcome to the bullpen. So you say welcome to, and then there's a beat, and then you say the bullpen. So okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it, and then you three say it along with me, which for me and for the people watching is going to be horrific because of the delay between us. Um, but it'll at least help you get the bullpen meter. Is everybody ready to? Say welcome to the bullpen a few times. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Apologies to everyone, especially Trevor. Here we go. Welcome, welcome to, to the bullpen. The bullpen. <laughs> yeah, that's horrifying. Let's do it again. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to, to the bullpen. The bullpen. <laughs> again. Welcome, welcome to, to the bullpen. The bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trevor. All right. Have fun. <laughs> pick the best ones of those, oh, or pick boy. the worst ones. Yeah, we don't. We have no control over it. Yeah. But I'm I'm the devil on your shoulder, going like, pick the worst takes. Yeah. Okay. It's good uh, that you admit it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that means we're live. Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, this is an exciting new bullpen. We had said last month that this month would have not a bullpen, but an editor's note. But as is commonly true with episodes of the letters page, we lied. We are liars. And so, fibbers. yeah, and yeah, and so it is just a fib. It's not a huge lie, but it's, been, it's a pretty big lie. Um, uh, not not in our top ten biggest though, for real though. So that's fine. Uh, so yeah. as is commonly true uh, here in a bullpen, we've got me. Hi, I'm Christopher. We also have this guy over here. Oh, me? Yeah, you. I'm pointing at you. Oh, <laughs> only on your screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Adam. And then over here we have. Oh, that's me. That's I'm it, Paul. It's Adam. So Paul, you said that this is only on my screen. This should be on your screen as well. If you put mine them in the right order. Mine are straight line up and down. So you oh, are. I've got yours a well. grid of four. Yeah, yeah. Mine's a grid of four. So it should be so me. Adam. You're in the top left. Yeah. And then Adam is. So you're pointing off you're the pointing, off my monitor. Yeah, you need to point the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see what the problem is. It, it, right. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do that. It's going to be fine. So this is Adam. <laughs> <laughs> this is Paul. 
Yeah. Well, because this is what this my screen is what all the viewers are seeing. This so is, this is this Adam. is Christopher. This is yeah. Paul. But we yeah, also have one Paul. more person who is brand new, who's never <laughs> been on any letters pitch thing before. Man, the, Hi, radio, the quality of radio here <laughs> is so good. I, I am yet <laughs> another Christopher. Uh, <laughs> what do you want us to call you in this episode out loud? Uh, it's it's going to be easier if you just call me Braithwaite because. That is what you usually call me, and Fair it enough. just ends that is up what your easier. name label says. Well, <laughs> not on the. This is not what his la- name label on the zoo, on the, the this, on the the live stream says Chris, yeah. but it's fine. We'll call you Braithwaite. Braithwaite is Chris. Chris is Braithwaite. I, uh, um, I'm not going to change it on the fly. Chris White. Chris Braith White. Chris. Braith Chris. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> Braith Braith Duffer. <laughs> no, um. please God, no. That that sounds. <laughs> That sounds very bad. <laughs> so, Chris, introduce yourself. Oh. Everybody, yeah, most of our listeners yeah. know who I am, who Adam is, who Paul is. Who are you? Uh, yeah, no, I'm the uh, game developer here at Greater Than Games. I do a lot of stuff in the background to polish and refine and uh, make everything work on the development end, and then also work with the playtesters to get the playtesting done. And I also moonlight as a writer and as a brainstormer and really just do all of the other stuff that that is needed to make games work. I would also throw some design work in there, not just development, oh, yes, but also design. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. It's good to have you here because your work uh, was and continues to be instrumental on the uh, Definitive Edition stuff that we're doing, which is the topic of this bullpen, is we did a Definitive Edition episode uh, a few weeks ago, and there was enough follow-up questions and interest that we're like, okay, it's worth doing a bullpen about this, because it'd be good to have Paul here to talk about like why we're doing this as a product, and it'd be good to have Braithwaite here, because he did so much development and working with playtesters, um, and design work. So, yeah, here uh, we and, all And Twitzen uh, likes to remind me that I'm a GM. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, I think that you are uh, a great GM because you're mean to your players. <laughs> <laughs> and I know who all your players are. So. Look, look, oh, I if assume they, they want to make open-ended bargains with Zhu Long, I'm not going to stop them. <laughs> That's the thing that they did. And Oh my god. Right. right. <laughs> Don't do that. What did you assume, Paul? You said you assumed that he was a mean GM, like you might make a mean GM. Oh yeah, he, and you're a mean GM. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. You so, want to talk about, you want to start off by talking about the schedule? My, Adam, look at you getting yeah. right down to business. I'm going to keep, keep us on whip. track. You're not yeah. usually the keep us on track one. No, I'm You're not. going to defeat the Hunts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For the upcoming schedule, uh, the first episode in the month of March is episode 168 um, on March 2nd. It's a writer's room. Uh, Night Mist versus Fanatic. Ooh, ho, 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 boy. Uh, Tuesday, March 9th, episode 169 is Creative Process Hero HQs. Uh, what does HQ stand for, Adam? Um, high Qualities, I uh, believe. Paul, what does HQ stand for? I was going to say High Quality. You've got to do a different one, uh, though. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Uh, half Quarterback, I think that's a yeah, that's position yeah, that's... in in the, the Super Bowl game. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, um, Chris, what does HQ stand for? Uh, higher qualities. Higher qualities? It's, it, it's all about their <laughs> ideals. Wow, Adam, you've just been one-upped. Ah. <laughs> wow. Uh, Highest qualities. How about that? Oh, nice. nice. Oh, Adam, huh. that's just derivative. <laughs> And I am here to actually answer the question of what HQs is, which everyone knows is hero helium quirks. Uh, and so we're going to talk about heroes speaking with that high voice. That no, you get in all using. seriousness, it's hindquarters. Oh, uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Paul, in all seriousness, what is it? It's the butt ups. <laughs> in all seriousness. Uh, when we find out what, what Adam's favorite butt is. And uh, as we all know, it's either Baron Blade and or Chrono Ranger. We know yeah. that. Uh, Paul, what was that again? We, we know, we know it's, it's, it's health Chrono quantity. Hell, it's health, like yeah. how much how much quanti- how much health they have. Health the quantity, quantity of health. Right. It's yeah. like HP, but Q. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Chris, in all seriousness, what does HQ stand for? In all seriousness. Oh, in, in all seriousness, it's something that I can't think of right now because <laughs> On the I spot. have failed. Yeah. Head quails. No, I, I, Head I, quails. Yeah. Happy quarks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there, there you have it. That's what that episode will be about. Uh, Paul, do you want to tell us what the next episode yeah. is? <laughs> On Tuesday, March 16th, there's episode 170. Ooh. It's ridiculous that there's that many episodes. The last page. <laughs> oh, there's more uh, than that, though. That's just their type. Of, that's just how many no, na- regular episodes there are. I'm aware. Doesn't count bullpens I'm or publisher's note or editor's notes. Or, yeah. 
Uh, that's the writer's room. Luck the setback. That's not what it says. Writer's room. Luck of the setback. Oh, okay. You're uh, was so quick. You're so so quick. Oh, I, I would say luck like of the setback. luck of the setback. Luck of the setback. <laughs> luck, of, luck of the setback. Perfect. <laughs> hey, Chris, you want to tell us about? I, I do. Okay. Uh, specifically, I want to tell you how Tuesday, March 23rd, is editor's note number 45, which is the real return. Probably. Right. Probably. Of editor's yeah, we'll note. See. This was supposed to be editor's <laughs> note number 45. Who knows when editor's note number 45 is going to happen, but we think it's next month. We think it's March. Uh, and then finally, because March is one of those rare months with the five Tuesdays, there will be Tuesday, March 30th, episode 171, Creative Process American Folklore, which Adam and I are <laughs> hype about. Yeah, I mean, we're hyped about all of these, honestly. We've been looking forward to that one for a while, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially, especially the the hero heavy quail episode. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right, that's the upcoming schedule. Um, everyone's excited. Oh, Amelia Rice in the chat <laughs> posted a list. Uh, headquarters, high quality, highly qualified, highly questionable. <laughs> Hydro Quino. <laughs> Hydro yeah. Hydro Quebec, Holy Quran. I, I'm surprised I didn't think of that. Hongqi. 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 Yeah. Have quick yeah. hazard quotients. Hazard quotients. High cube doesn't count. Cube isn't spelled with a Q. Well, so like they do that yeah, with barbecue yeah, except, though. Also, right. so what high cube means is I, it's, the it's most a, nonsense thing. Yeah. It really is. It's a it's a cargo container thing. We get high cube <laughs> cargo containers all the time. It is first of all abbreviated HQ for reasons that don't make any sex sense. Second of all, it is not a cube at not all. Either. It is even farther from a cube than a regular cargo container because the uh, like a regular cargo container, like the entrance, if you look at the back, is basically a square. A high cube is taller than that, right. being more rectangular. And then obviously the whole thing is a long rectangular prism. It's a nonsense name. What the hell? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's great. Great, great, great. All right. We're all... Yeah, I agree, Jay-Z. Hazard Quotient is not a bad villain name. Or, so... um, or a late 90s punk band. Uh, Hazard Quotient band or album? I think I think band. You know, yeah, yeah, I think, I think band. Band's, that's a, that's a yeah. good band name, actually. But like, not not like the prime of punk. Like the it's no. it's late nineties. It's, it's new punk. <laughs> right, I don't yeah. know. It, it's, it really does sound more like a band for a chemical named, or it sounds like an, an album for a chemically named band. You oh, know? sure. Like the petrol spills hazard quotient. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. I wonder if that's going to come back too, because all '90s stuff is super cool now with the kids these days. Oh really? Like tell us the oh, man. Adam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I, I was just learning this recently. Like the kids these days are like skinny jeans suck. We need jeans with wider legs and things like oh, that. Are Jinkos They're coming like, back? I hope so. <laughs> are we gonna oh, get the big old Jinkos? <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I also want like goths to come back. Like with the, oh yeah. For sure. Like the spiky ear stud earrings all the way around mm-hmm. and like that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. man. I'm excited for goths. I'm hoping. Yeah. 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 All right. Now that we've done all of that, whatever that was, <laughs> let's go to the question section in which Trevor will put some sort of intro to the question section. Trevor, you're going to have to come up with some sort of bullpen Trevor question song. I don't know. I, I say you're going to have to. You don't have to do anything. You're, you're, you're the one that makes it happen. So It's we'll... question time. Let's ask some questions. The fun thing is Adam was like, everyone's going to come along with me on this one. And no one did. <laughs> Adam's like, uh-huh. I'll ask a question for the other ones. Because it's question time. And it's hard. When you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go, Trevor. Good luck. I'll admit, I was having fun watching Adam just sort of struggle to draw that out. Try to figure out the... Uh, you, made it, you made it happen. You brought it home. The super group. <sighs> All right. The first question for today comes from the Burning Stick Man, who writes, Dear Adam... Nope, that's not what he writes. <laughs> I'm off to a bad start. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. We're all a little slap happy. Read it like. up already. <clears throat> uh, he writes, Dear Christopher, Adam, Trevor, and whoever else happens to be in the booth with you fine gentlemen today, with Back the recognition me. that in the current circumstances, the booth is virtual, of course. 
Yes, it is you, Chris. It's good to have you. And it's good to be recognized as that person. Yeah. Uh, you're actually being recognized in this case as whoever else. What are uh, college yeah, kids doing I right apologize. now if, if they're not trying to cram as many people into a phone booth? What they're trying they, to cram as few people into a phone booth as possible. <laughs> like, oh, look at this phone booth. Only one person. I <laughs> got him. <laughs> I assume. Well, you guys have been talking about the Definitive Edition for some time now, I'd always thought it was more of a maybe sometime in the future sort of thing. So I'm very excited to learn it will be upon us before the end of the year. I'm looking forward to grabbing it and wrangling my game group to play through all of it again while relearning how everybody works. Which brings me to my question. Given the changes to mechanical and additional keywords, am I correct in understanding the Definitive Edition will not be compatible with the current iteration of Sentinels the Multiverse? Or will there be some kind of conversion rules released, say, if I wanted to try using OG Nightmist with the Definitive Edition set? Mm-hmm. So the answer is is technically both. That Definitive Edition isn't backwards compatible um, and it's not intended to be. However, there will be a conversion rubric that we release that um, lets you take previous things and play them alongside new things. Um, mm-hmm. But it's not like it's not intended. It's it's going to be rough. It's going to be like okay, yes, you can make these things work. This is how you do it. However, none of it's like none of the converted stuff is play tested to work alongside that. It's like this is uh, more or less accurate. It'll be fine. Um, one of, one of the things that is going on at Definitive Edition is that all of the decks are Christopher Christopher and Wraith White and all the play testers. We're putting a lot more effort into making sure from the get go that every deck is kind of is is pretty evenly balanced to each other and some of the older stuff isn't as much and certainly isn't with the definitive edition stuff Mm -hmm. so that's the downside the upside is the rubric for conversion is very straightforward actually so that's that's nice like it is like thinking i'm thinking back to my experiences in the aughts both with jenko jeans and also with dungeons and dragons where um the the, when they came from third edition dungeons and dragons to three five Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that, like that you could convert third edition D&D monsters and situations and stuff over to 3.5 pretty straightforwardly. They weren't made to be balanced because they they did a lot more careful rebalancing with 3.5 than they had with third edition. (laughs) But the rubric for conversion was fairly straightforward, like, oh, these rules changed and they turn into this. And here you go, right? So if you've got anything, whether it's an old officially published stuff or not officially published stuff or whichever you like that you want to play in with Definitive Edition and have fun, awesome, have fun. But the goal for Definitive Edition is that you get a, a good, like, well play tested, balanced, internally consistent experience for new players. So for new players, yeah. play with just Definitive Edition. <clears throat> for you also, guys, play with whatever you want and it'll it's work. It's also a lot more streamlined. So like... Really don't use the old stuff with new players. I mean, right. like, don't use the old stuff with new that's players. That's the most for thing. Sure. Yeah. Use the old no. stuff as much as you want yourself for brand right. new players. In in all yeah. honesty, when we were developing it, we were looking at a lot of the old uh, ways of shuffling through decks, uh, like things like reveal until you find X thing, and then shuffle the rest of your cards, and then do a thing with the revealed card. And we just keyworded that. And and so a lot of the conversion rubric is basically going to be that whenever you would do uh, take cards off the top of your deck to do this thing and then do this other thing, just just do it and know that it's being called a different word. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, and, and a lot of it's going to be too, like, anytime you see the word equipment, it means... Um, it means right. item. Um, I think I'm going to have to just force all environment card destruction to be to be ongoing card destruction. Um yeah, we'll just we'll 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 have that released sometime um, yeah. b- between now and the <clears throat> and a, the kicks. A lot of but... a, a lot of the the conversion really was about, uh, like Adam said, sort of balancing things out. So when we had someone like Wraith who was very focused on hitting things with various types of knives, we reduced that slightly i mean she's still very adept at but it's no longer the correct way to play her right Mm -hmm. and she has in her kit now that it's much more of a oh superhero that's more about being on the periphery and doing the right thing at the right time some of which include knives Mm -hmm. uh trevor go ahead and cut this chris your audio is cutting in out a little bit is uh, um can you make i don't know if your microphone like plugs in at all to the thing or if it's like, it, it does. So, um, I'm having some some crackly headphone issues, so I don't know. Yeah, the what crackly is. thing that you're hearing, yeah. we're also hearing when you talk. That. 
Um, so I would just make sure that your connection here is solid, your connection on the cord is solid, and your connection from the cord to the computer is solid, because that tends to be what causes the most crackliness. Let me go yeah. reseat the uh, the the yeah. plug. Yeah, that's fine. I was noticing that too. Hey everybody, we're it was, here. I was wondering if that was just me, but we'll find no, out. No, unfortunately, it's for everybody. Oh no. There's this staircase here behind my desk. Better go down the stairs. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. Why do you do that when you know you could just take the elevator? Oh, you're right. <laughs> Boop! <laughs> <laughs> All right, how's that? I mean... A bit better? Seems better. So, so far, not crappily, so... Yeah. So far, not crappily. Yeah. So far, not bad. And it appears that Audacity has now stopped because I did that. So oh, how did? do I resume that? Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so hold on. So, hmm, boy, that's a good question. Uh, what happens if you just hit the red button? If it I will hit the record red button. over. Okay, then don't do that. Don't do that. So I could file save and yes. then. Yeah, you so have hit to file, file, save project. Got it. And save that to your desktop, and it'll save both a file and a folder with important stuff. And just hang on to that. That's not a thing that you're going to send to Trevor, but um, it's a thing that you're going to hang on to until the episode goes live, just in case. Because that it becomes gotcha. kind of like a master backup. Then, after you've done that, you go to File, Export, and export it as a WAV. Okay, but now I should just hit the red button again. No, 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 you shouldn't. You okay, should right I now. Should not. You should right now, while you still have the file open... Yes. Go to File, Export, Export as WAV. Export, Export as WAV. And Hello export WAV. that. And just save that to your desktop for now. I'll tell you later where you're supposed to put it, but you should definitely export it now and not later. Gotcha. I love that XKCD comic. Which one? The, the, the intelligence uh, and inanity of statements uh, based on human proximity to a cat. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, that has been exported as a web. What okay. is the next step? We've created now. A go back to Audacity Trevor, is, and hit okay. Control W, and that should clear everything out and leave you with a nice clean blank Audacity. That that does seem to be the case. Great. So now hit the record button. Mm -hmm. This is me now hitting the record button. Oh look, I'm seeing things that are appearing. Great. Okay. And so now, for the purpose of lining things up, um, we are going to, as a group, count to twelve. And we're going to mm -hmm. do it in the order that we read questions. Are mm -hmm. you ready? Yes. Here we go. Yes. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Fifteen. Oh, no. Oh, you screwed it up. Oh, God. Now, well, the, now it'll never be synced. Podcast is over. All right. So, Trevor, that should give you everything you need to bring this new recording snippet back in. It'll be fine. Um, okay. And hopefully my microphone and or headphones behave. It sounds better now. You haven't been crackly since we did it back in. So, okay, everybody. Hope. hope you enjoy that part of the video. Let's get back to it. Um, so we answered all that stuff. You, know, you just said, you just talked about the Wraith. Um, and, yeah, and, uh, and I'd waited until he finished that thing and then I paused him. So unless there's anything anybody else wants to say in response God, to I the I did have something that I wanted to rules. say, but I don't. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, okay. I remember. So I Trevor, just come back in here with Adam. Um, yeah, so like that actually goes a little bit into um, another approach that we did. We wanted to make sure that there was no one way to play every character because there was definitely a couple characters that was, you just played the same way every single time. Um, Maybe you did. Well, most people did. Yeah, okay. Most people did. Yeah. Um, and so we wanted a lot more versatility from everybody. I don't think we got there. Yeah. 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 I think we did. All right. The letter continues. I am also curious about the first appearance variants, specifically mm. Legacy. Is the first appearance variant going to be another version of the World War II era hero? Or might we see the first Parsons to take the name from mm. the war to end all wars? <laughs> Neither. Neither. No. Neither for the first appearance. The first appearance of legacy is in fact the first appearance of that specific legacy. Right. And that's something that that 
is true of all of these things. It's not the the first appearance absolute zero isn't Henry Goodman absolute zero. It is Ryan Frost absolute zero. Right. It's the first appearance of that character. And it's not the first appearance of Ryan Frost in the comics. It's the first appearance of Ryan Frost as absolute zero. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. As always, thank you for the fantastic world you've let us all play around in. The Burning Stick Man. I have a letter from S Words. Mm -hmm. Who writes, greetings, metallic compatriots. I confess I've been both excited and apprehensive about your definitive edition announcements. Will's new Sentinels is always a source of joy in my life, and I intend to reach into my sheath pouch and support the kitsch, the, the kitsch, kitsch starter. Kitsch. Yeah, yeah, we're, kitsch we're gonna, starter. I like it. We're, Go we're with gonna, it fund small uh, objects to put on Oh, your... like, okay, yeah, I yeah. see. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm yet ready to let go of my old cards as a relic of an older time. However, as I mainly play the game via my mobile, I'm curious to hear about the digital game. Will there be an update to the digital game, i.e. a legacy version with the old game and the debugger edition as separate game modes? Or will it be released as a new definitive edition version, if at all? Okay, so I, hmm, we can't speak to this because this is a decision to right. be made by Handelabra. Um, we have talked to Handelabra a bunch, and we know they are working on figuring out how best they are going to bring Definitive Edition to the video game world. So I am fairly confident. I'm like 90% confident there's going to be Definitive Edition Sentinels the Multiverse. Is it going to be an update to the current app? Is it going to be its own app? I have preferences there, but I'm not going to speak to them because I don't want to make Handelabra's life yeah. more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but I, uh, but they're going to do something with it. Yeah, yeah they, they intend to do something with it, and we shall wait and see. And as soon as yeah, we can announce anything about that, um, I will try to sneak the announcement and do it before they do it. But knowing them, they'll probably announce it their own before I can sneak it out from under them. But I'm going to try. I'm not going to try that hard. If they indicate that they want to announce it first, then I will let them do so. Maybe. A well, wild card. Not that much of a wild card. Like, not really. Anyway. Finally, the letter <laughs> continues. I would also like to express my disappointment in the changes to Bunker's deck. Yeah. Oh, uh-oh. Yeah. Instead of the refined, elegant, bladed sword he could have had, he has kept his <laughs> guns in the form of ordnance. For shame. We eagerly anticipate the changes to Expatriate's deck where she converts to the civilized world of swords. Until then, may your edges forever be sharp. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, uh, I agree. Bunker setting up for disappointment. There. Bunker could have been all swords all the way, and you know, S words here raises an excellent point that expatriate would be cooler with swords that had multiple types of uh, of what if sword her, ammo. What if her guns shoot swords? Oh man, best of both worlds, right? That's that's what we should be doing. I, I don't disagree at all. I think that's great. Yeah, I think I think if we've got a new design direction for expatriate, all the work that we've already put into it out the window. Sorry, Chris. Go on. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, yeah. I can think of a few ways to make that work. Yeah. <laughs> Not well. Actually, both worlds is a Star Trek reference. Is actually. it? Oh yeah. There's a very famous Star Trek: The Next Generation episode called "Best of the Bo Best of Both Worlds." I think that it's. I think that your your Probably statement of probably, "Best of Both Worlds" is like can be a Star Trek reference, but isn't necessarily a Star Trek. No, reference. it was invented by Star Trek. No one before uh, 1991 mm. ever said "Best of Both Worlds." <laughs> mm. Mm. I have no reason not to believe you. Yeah. yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to allow it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I think I have a question to read. You do? Cool. I think you do. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I think I'll read it too. Uh, da Shep writes, Hello there, fantastic gentlemen and creators. I want to start off by saying that my game night group and I are nothing short of excited for this Sentinels Definitive Edition. But some of us have had the same question, and we were hoping to get some clarification. We know you said that the Definitive Edition is not backward compatible with a previous version of the game, but what about the hero character cards specifically? Could you use them with the new decks and villains and still be okay? I.e. being able to use Extreme Prime Warden's Argent Adept with the new deck. Whatever right. the case, we look forward to your answer and will continue to be nothing short of excited. In the meantime, we will keep playing Sentinels and the RPG. Thank you again from Leko, Shellcaster, Star Siege, and Sanguine, a.k.a. The Outcast. Man, I want to tell you, when I hear Star Siege, I want to say, Star Siege! <laughs> um, okay, so, like, you say, could you use the the old hero character cards or with the new decks? And it's like, 
Yes, in that you could also use a regular deck of playing card and be like, "This Jack of Spades is the character card for my Unity deck." Like you can think that you can do whatever you want. We won't stop you. The cards, the the hero cards themselves, will probably work better than the full decks for the most part. But But like, not all. You're gonna need. You're gonna need the the conversion i would and and like i would say i wouldn't even bother with that if you've got the character legacy don't i I wouldn't recommend using old character cards it's like i said this is not recommended you can do whatever you want it's your game but they're not play tested that way they're not intended to work that way some of the variants that we release over the process of making uh definitive edition will be incredibly similar to old variants but some of them will be incredibly different and any time you're that also you... handicapping yourself by looking at old art. <laughs> <laughs> but well, it... Legacy is actually a really good example there because on the front of the Legacy card, it's probably it's somewhat equivalent, but the new Legacy character card is actually slightly weaker by intention. Yeah, because he only buffs characters and and not himself. and not himself, right? And and. But the rest of his deck has been substantially buffed to compensate whenever he's doing personal damage or, or anything right. like that. Well, and it, and the, the idea is that like he's been made to be a more inspirational character rather yeah. than like everybody gets a plus one damage. Like no, no, let's be more specific about this. And so people look at his character card and they're like, oh no, is Legacy worse? And the answer is like definitely not. It's not no. that Legacy is worse. It's that he's more dialed in. It's more specific <laughs> yeah. as to what he's doing. So, yeah. Uh, all right, all right. Thank you for that letter. Right, so the answer, so the TLDR answer is, yeah, you can do that, but but, but probably don't. But, but yeah, you don't need to. Mm-hmm. Don't 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 worry about you, it. You could if you wanted, but why? Yeah, you'll have all the variants in five years anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so this one is uh, is my question uh, by Blizzard King, and it's dear Christopher, Adam, Paul, and guest star Chris. Oh, I got it. It's been a while, yeah, it's very, very pleasing. It's been a while since sending in my last question, as I am perpetually two months behind the podcast, though I loved your bit last time I wrote of how I was the king of an ice cream confection. I saw the definitive uh, I saw the definitive edition episode come out, so I decided to skip ahead to listen to it as I was interested to see what all was going to be in or change in the new edition. That was a very interesting sentence. You got it, though. You did it. Originally, when you talked about making a new edition with better art, I was torn at thinking about buying all the Sentinels again, as I have all of Sentinels, including the Cauldron fan expansions. But now that I have listened, actually, it's now that have, but now that I have listened to the episode and seen the new cards, I have been given all the right reasons to get it. Awesome art, reworked heroes, events, health dials, etc. But enough on how you're able to constantly feed my superhero card game addiction. The question I am writing in to ask about is Unity. You said that every hero has been touched up, though some more than others. Unity is a hero that me and my friends have all played at least once or more because she has a really cool concept, fun design, and she's the one true summoner character, especially before the Oblivion expansion. Oblivion expansion. I always... You always say Oblivion? Yeah, I just do. Oblivion. It's Oblivion shards. Right. The problem is that I now sometimes mean to say the word oblivion, and I say oblivion, mm-hmm. and I'm like, what? I do that too. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, behold, oblivion, and you're like, <laughs> the, are you <laughs> pronouncing that word wrong? I'm like, not actually, just different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. In our time playing, she is the most inconsistent and one of the weakest because of how dependent she is on certain cards to play golems and how multi-target attacks can shut her down. I'm interested in knowing how Unity has been changed, either in overall design ideas, like Fnatic being stronger below 10 hit points, also Fnatic is now stronger below 10 hit points, or in specific (laughs) cards, like how you read the Prayer of Desperation card text. Looking at the one card I have seen, Mr. Chomps, and how his damage has been changed from golems plus one to just golems, I assume she has more capabilities for putting out bots, but that is pure speculation. Sorry for the overly long question to just ask, how did Unity change? But I'm a man of far too many words. Forever a fan, Blizzard King. Uh, P.S. Adam, when you went off to the art mines, I didn't realize you were coming back with half with a hall of pure platinum. Like, hot damn, the art I have seen is absolutely gorgeous and shows how much work you put into it. Thank you so much. Really Don't praise that. the artist. We need him miserable. No. no. <laughs> no so here's a nice thing, I need Chris. Normally, <laughs> normally I would agree with that, that you'd want to keep the artist miserable. But Adam is his own worst enemy. Adam's phenomenal okay, at making himself miserable. We can all spend lots of time Thank praising you. Adam, and most of it will 
be as water to a duck's back that he'll be like, oh, this praise is it's nice, true. but it doesn't nourish me. Um, it's definitely true. So Adam will enjoy the praise. So feel free to to go over the top and be like, Adam, you're doing great. Your art is wonderful. Everything's fantastic. And Adam will be like, oh, thanks. That's great. I'll take this nugget and I'll throw it over my shoulder and then I'll go back to this pile of I'm terrible. Right. I'll take all of these compliments and there's, put these in the... There's a real reason why... These are probably lies, there. Box. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, specifically as for Unity Changes, yeah. when we were looking at her, the the guiding light behind Unity is that she can't ever just put stuff out for free, no cost. I, she needs components to work with. She needs to expend energy. Like she, It's not just, oh, she waves her hand and a golem appears out of the ether. It's she works with the materials that she has and makes golems with her mind. So one of the, the, the common criticisms of Unity is that, well, you need to destroy equipment in order to make bots, or you can have a handful of bots and nothing to do with them. And so we addressed that. We, we changed her around so that she has many more ways of getting bots out. Although if she has a handful of bots and nothing else, she's going to have to, to work a little bit harder to get those specific bots out because she still needs to do something to get those specific ones out. But if she wants to just say, discover one, she might be able to, to do that. Yeah, she, um, she certainly has more options than she did before. I wouldn't say yeah. she's stronger than before. I would say she's more consistent than before. Much more consistent. And and the nerfs that we made were very, very calculated based on some of the more common things that people would do. Like Stealth Bot, for instance, uh, got, got hit a little bit with the nerf bat so that you can't just infinitely tank one-point hits with Stealth Bot for the entire team. Right, yeah. Um, so, yeah. All the bots look way cooler. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> That's the other major upgrade. Well, I, I, I do have a slight quibble with that because Mr. Chomps doesn't look cute anymore. That's true. He's still a little cute. He's still a little cute. A little bit. Yeah, but I, I understand fierce. that a lot of people will be... There's a lot of different versions of Mr. Chomps is the thing. There's there's ones that are more raptory, and the era in which we set that card is just... Um, it, like, it, it wasn't right to do super cutesy so that's something else that's i think really cool about definitive edition that like i think some people know but some people don't is the how much work christopher and adam put into and then adam put into drawing deciding and then adam drawing every art area appropriate Mm -hmm. that makes sense right so like there's a whole timeline of the publication history of sentinel comics where Christopher and Adam know exactly what year a given comic book came out. Well, now in Definitive Edition, the art matches the era. And the writing all the as way well. Through. Like, yeah. there's another thing we did with the flavor text was make sure that, like, mm-hmm. the, the amount of, like, goofiness or, or seriousness or darkness or whatever, um, like, the whole aspect of the card start to finish is intended to be uh, uh, indicative of that era. So, I, I mean, yeah. like, extreme 90s fanatic. It's, it's just... <laughs> It's, uh, yeah. it's hysterical. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look at the chat, see if there's any questions we missed there. I know that there was one way back, yeah, from TechFire80, who wrote at 1137, uh, Greetings, Greater Than Games team. While most of the variants are the same hero, what about Young Legacy? Will we be seeing her mm-hmm. as a promo? I wish you all the best, TechFire80. Uh, so that is uh, yet to be seen in the future. Um, I don't super want to talk about a bunch of what future content will be specifically one way or another, because yeah. that's the future. Um, but I can tell you that we definitely will see lots more legacy variants, because Legacy's got a pile of variants, um, and that uh, the game will have you know young legacy and greatest legacy in it. So uh, over time, we'll see how all that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Is there other questions in the chat? Other questions. Um, yeah, just so everybody in the chat knows, and you can cut this, Trevor. Um, the We're going to be taking questions from you every four questions. We're each going to do a question that we read, and then we'll look at the chat. So. Yeah. Um, so that you know your timing. Yeah, since other, since we only have one topic this time, we usually do a topic and then go to the chat, but there's only right. one topic, so yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't, I don't see any other. No, I think we're right good for now. now. Yeah. I think we're good for now. Oh, here yeah. we go. Uh, oh boy, here we go. Uh, Adam, if you'll do the Klutz lament, and then Paul, you can do the Amelia Ryan's. Klutz yeah. lament. Okay. They just came in just now. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, Quetzalmet asks, uh, do you guys plan to add any new decks in the expansions? Oh, boy. Um, go ahead, Paul. Paul wants to say a thing. Yes. We're not going to tell you what what. All right. No. Uh, boy. <laughs> that is something that we had talked the, the, about initially, and then and we decided, yeah, we're gonna add. We're gonna yeah, add yeah. Ones. Time will tell. Right. Time will tell. That is a thing that I've been very strongly like. Okay, right. I don't want to talk about this uh, yet. We, yeah, we don't. We're not gonna like reveal details, and also we don't want to commit to anything specifically that right. is that mm -hmm. far in the future. Right. Because what we what we've learned always <laughs> is like this this game has existed for a long time, and at this point, we're confident it will continue to exist for a long time. Right. So, and Menard's environment deck confirmed. Yeah, exactly. And we're making it more, and we're trying to. We're, it, it's making us that fact is making us more and more cautious yep. about saying things. Less someone is like six years ago. You said this thing. Are right. you right. lying to us the whole time? It was right. like no and, things and change the a lot. Is, they've been saying years. they're liars the entire time. <laughs> right. How were you expecting the truth? We've never claimed that we weren't liars. Right. <laughs> so anyway, so when I say yes. Am right. I lying? Paul's not. Paul hasn't been a, a, a proven liar on the podcast before, though. That's true. Yeah, that's true. We're not saying he isn't a liar. I think that's a lie. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, one of us only lies. One of us only tells the truth. <laughs> Except that none of us, none of us only tell the truth. Or do we? <laughs> or was I lying? <laughs> was I lying? Just now? <laughs> I'm just remaining diplomatically silent here. You, but you just ruined no it. Answer. Now you're saying I know. things. No, I'm a ruiner. That That is my function. <laughs> oh, so you're not a liar. You're just a ruiner. <laughs> yes. How is one question going to uh, Again, like that, that is my style as a GM. I make my players sad that they have made decisions. Oh, wow. Teach them to make decisions. Inaction is the only action. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they make terrible decisions. You know, I've often heard, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a still choice. Made a choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's a wizard for the ages. Yep. Oh man, do you know what I'm excited about? I don't. Project Be Mithril? saying things, and is, then is Project things Mithril changing. Oh, and then, okay. oh yeah, man. I, I thought you were going to say the thing you were excited about was Project Mithril. Based I am on what... excited about Project Mithril. Yeah. Someday. I'm so excited we should about make Mithril. that. We really should. It is a game that we've been talking about since at least 2012, maybe 2011. It was. It was I the year I moved here. 2011. Oh, the, you, was you, it? you moved. Yeah. Here. We didn't it talk about the it before then. Here because, no, yeah, we no, didn't. it was before then because because Paul and I started the Project Mithril play. We were in the first list. office. Oh yes, it was in the first office. But Project uh, Paul and I started the Project Mithril uh, uh, music playlist like when we were doing a bunch of shipouts in that or in the in the warehouse, the first warehouse. So I think it had to be yeah, twenty. Yeah, but it was it time. was after I moved here. I remember I remember talking about it. I remember being up front of FedEx and like carrying stuff in and talking about it then and like okay, that was yeah. All right. It was. It was definitely. But you, did, you, did you move here in 2013 or 2012? I think 2013. I think. Huh. I, I think. It, I don't remember now. These are the important questions me. here. This is yeah. what's it, it, it delights me that Christopher always names his projects after various metals. Yes. And so, in in deciding to be different, I decided to name uh, my project names after various types of environmental crop pests, mm. which <laughs> led to just far too much confusion. Mm. Um. And and I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> Good talk. Braithwaite, you want to read the question from no, 1149? No. Amelia Ryans is going to no, I've got a question. Oh, no, it's Paul. Wait, it's here. Paul. All right, here Paul. we go. Yeah, yeah. Let me All right. Say. Amelia Ryans asks, one question came to mind regarding the new Barry keyword. Reproduced mm -hmm. here for ease of reference. No need to read it if you don't want to spoil it to Radio Land. Spoil it to Radio Land, Paul. Yeah, tell him. Good. Tell him. Look spoil it. Barry. Put the indicated card at the bottom of the associated deck until that deck has zero nope, cards in it. that's not what it says. Wait, 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 let me go back. Barry, put the indicated card on the bottom of the associated deck unless that deck has zero cards in it, in which case the card goes to the top of the appropriate trash instead. So for most cases, Barry is just take the card and put it under the deck. The only time it's different is if there's no deck. If the deck is out of cards, then it goes to the trash instead. Yeah. The way the second part is worded implies that there's a specific case that could cause issues, possibly up to and including an infinite loop. Are you able to confirm that there's an edge case that is avoided by having that line in there? And if so, perhaps a hint at whose deck it's from. If there's no edge case, is it just a thematic choice? So the reason for the second line is if you have no cards in your deck, 
mm-hmm. then you bury a card and it goes to and it, and it goes to the no deck space, which means it's the only card in the deck. And then that card comes into play and gets buried again. Like you're just playing the same card over and over again. Um, and we were able to reproduce this effect in play testing. So the trick is, if you've got a deck, bury a card by putting it on the deck. If you don't have a deck, put it in the trash. And that solves for edge cases. Yeah. So it's not like a specific case made an infinite loop. It's just like a variety of specific cases could right. make infinite loops. Yep. That are like silly and not fun. All right. I Could think we're all I caught answer up? the one at uh, by Akash Menards today at eleven fifty two? Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. that is the question for you to read. So. <laughs> So, 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 hold on. So, uh, Trevor's is gonna chop stuff out. So, Tre- um, just you know, Chris, Trevor chops out all of us talking about all of the like us talking about which questions we're gonna answer, and then when it's time to actually ask it, you say, "Okay, so so and so," and you don't need to say the time you should say so and so asks in the chat, blah blah blah. So, all right, all right. All right. Uh, so Akash Menards asks in the chat. I'm gonna oh, boy. crack up. I'm sorry. In regards to making the decks more thematic, do you think you'll need to make as many changes to the newer decks as you did to the older decks? And it's that's gonna be case by case. Tremendously difficult to answer. Yeah. In right. Anything other we than that? Yeah. We don't really know what's gonna happen in the next five years. Like, like right. how, how much? Some, how some much decks will change, change a lot. Some these, decks will yeah. change a little. I think that we were. I, I think that. If like going into definitive edition core game, we were confident that bunker was going to change about as much as bunker changed. I don't think that if you had asked us like, oh, do you think Tempest is going to change as much as Tempest changed? It'd be like, oh no, I don't think so. I think that we would have thought that Tempest would change a bit, and Tempest ended up changing a we lot. We thought most things weren't changing at all. Like, well, for or, sure, or that was very, the, that was the little. other thing. <laughs> we're like, right? Uh, no, bunker definitely needs some tweaks, but that, some tweaks. but yeah, but that's it. Legacy's yeah. fine. He's definitely not going to work completely differently. And, yeah, yeah. I, I have to say it was very interesting uh, in in the original like brainstorming because my natural inclination is to just take everything, tear it down, and then start up again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and Christopher was very clear about like no, 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 this is my baby. None of your usual nonsense, please. Right. And, and so <laughs> right. we had to. Uh, or rather, I like your nonsense. Feel free to do your nonsense. I will disregard most of it. <laughs> oh no, it, it, it ended up for the best. Yeah. Oh. All right, uh, Trevor, cut these things I'm about to say here. Um, I, guys, I don't want to talk about Project Mithril a bunch in this episode because <laughs> I don't want to take attention away from Definitive Edition. But mm. Worm Sponsor, how is Project Mithril spelled? Uh, traditionally. Um, Mithril is how it's spelled. And uh, Twitson <laughs> asks, is, is Mithril a GSF revamp? Nope. If we were doing a GSF revamp, we'd call it Galactic Strike Force <laughs> Definitive Edition. Um, <laughs> we probably would actually just call it Galactic Strike Force and pretend the first yeah. one never happened. Um, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Or maybe call it something else and it's still... But like, yes, we someday want to do a Galactic Strike Force uh, revamp. It's not Project Mithril. Right. Um, the number of things we want to do someday is really, really long. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sheer Force is steel. Yeah. Yeah. Not cobalt. Right. Uh, um, let's see. So let's go ahead and jump back into questions from uh, from from the document, and then we'll come back to the chat. Okay. Um, yeah. Unless, uh, unless Paul, do you want a real quick answer Andy Aronson's question in the, in the Trevor cut this stuff time? It's yeah. at eleven fifty four. Yeah. Um, because is is there a here from from the Crimea? Perhaps that that was. I was going to ask you. Yeah, like you, you, global. You probably the, the like, global yeah. book is the, is the time to find out the answer to that question. Right. Yeah. I think that that's like question mark right now. Probably yeah, right. Right. This is the thing. It's too soon to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So um, what we'll do is n- note that uh, Ensign fifty three has a question at eleven fifty seven, and that's where we'll come back with questions when we do that in four questions here. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so to go back to the questions from before, the questions not from the chat, I've got one here from the Railroaders, who write, well, if it ain't the conductors of this here letters page, allow us to introduce ourselves before we go off the rails. Oh, We're the boy. Railroaders, the roughest, toughest guys and gals whose love for trains is only eclipsed by one man, who shall remain nameless. Our, organi- our organizers at the station wanted us to express our gratitude for the increase in passengers who boarded the hype train after your recent announcement. As a thank you, we brought you this train headlight and a small snowplow as we wish you a bright future and a clear path for the tracks ahead. And with that out of the way, a few of our members had the following esteemed question. Uh, uh, what, Adam, what are we going to do with this 
train headlight and snowplow. I don't know. I hate all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so good. I would, like do, would you would you not hate it if you were the one reading it? I feel like you only hate it because you're not reading it. No, I would hate it if I was reading it. Why? (laughs) You don't like all the puns? So many train puns. God. But you love Fright Train. Yes, I love... Yes. (laughs) (laughs) You got me. With this new edition, with all the bells and whistles, our hero base power is going to change. Are the incapacitated abilities going to change? I'm going to throw this one... Like Obviously, all four of us know these answers, but I'm going to throw this one over to uh, to Chris, to Braithwaite. Uh, Braithwaite, do you think any of the hero base powers or incapacitated abilities are going to change? Probably not, right? Meh. uh, Honestly, we started (laughs) thinking that we're going to not change the base powers because they're perfect. And and I think (laughs) every single one of them changed. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe... Tempests didn't. Maybe. Maybe. I actually don't remember off the top of my head, but like almost all of them changed. Uh, some of them in in ways that are like very reminiscent of the previous one. Like Tachyons, for instance, is is very reminiscent of the previous one, just better. Right. Mm-hmm. Same as like, and like, like we talked about earlier, legacy is reminiscent of the previous one, but worse, but situationally yeah. worse. Yeah. Yeah. And I and, imagine like as especially we get into the first the first few sets. Um, of expansions that we're going to see even more of that um, because there's a few of those early early expansion decks that the engines don't quite work how we intended them to. Train pun! Oh, I was about it. to do it. <laughs> I also like how right now we, you look back and you say like, yeah, the earlier decks will like change a few more, but as we get to the later decks, maybe not. Fast forward four years from now, right. you're lying because you changed every right. power. <laughs> Note that I'm oh, not I'll the one saying that. I know you. It's are. Adam. No, no, Adam no, no, is yeah, always yeah, like, oh, well, I want to oh, change yeah, my probably. art from four years ago, but not my art from two years ago. My art from two years ago is good. And then two years down the line, I'm like, well, I want to change my art from four years ago, but not from two years ago. Two years. I will say like, uh, uh, Wrath of the Cosmos and later is pretty okay still. See, right, right, right. But, but by the time you get to the point of drawing those characters over again. I, I will say that the new Captain Cosmic uh, looks fantastic. They, Thank you. The sheer number of hairstyles and <laughs> all of the different jackets. I love the yeah. mustache. Yeah. Yeah, the, the mustache. The mustache. Nice. Yeah. Actually, to be honest, since it is a 70s mustache, it's probably nice. Nice. Um, right. <laughs> but, uh, but the in-cap abilities have substantially changed we, yeah. we used to do a very sort of standardized each hero does one general thing one slightly altered general thing and then one highly specific thing to that hero for for in-cap abilities so like play a card and then the slightly different one would be like destroy an ongoing because that's somewhat different yeah. and then there would be one like you know do something specific to the environment, and obviously we changed it around. But when we went to in-cap abilities in Definitive Edition, because we're now dealing with phases, so start phase, play phase, uh, power okay. phase, draw phase, end phase, we mm-hmm. can now do nonsense like one hero takes their play phase, which includes any specific buffs to play phase that that hero might have. Mm-hmm. And we could even do fun stuff later on with some of the other phases. And it's it just in general, it feels much more personal to that hero. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, the biggest the yeah. biggest improvement in the game to me is the uh, the restructuring of the environments that to to make them just normal cards, like that they're ongoings and they're the one shots and stuff. One shot instead, instead of, of instead yeah. of being like well, environment cards just work differently for reasons that we're not going to explain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just it's just better. Yeah, I don't know that I have one specific thing that is the biggest change, but that is a that is a, that's yeah. a, a it's a it's just a huge quality of life for the environments. I would generally say that the biggest change, at least in my opinion, is that there's no more random damage out of nowhere being done by the environment right, the environment is a sort is a targetless source of damage yeah. from now on all damage is from a target so yeah yeah paul you were going to say something yeah i think it's it's interesting because the the concept of an environment deck that works like it does was very very new slash novel in sentinels of multiverse when it first came out <laughs> so getting a handle on how it should work took a bit of time and that's yeah, just like that, a good example of one of the things that like is improving. Right. I'm not gonna and, say we and, invented environments, but 
Maybe. And, and obviously shut me up if this is uh, not not to be talked about, but this was one of those fun conversations that Christopher and I had about making environmental character cards. Oh, God. So, yeah, this is one of the things that Chris was like, what if we did this thing? And I'm like, what if you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and, yeah. Like, and the thing is, I always want those things. Like, This is one of the things I actually really like about working with Chris is that he has lots of fun, cool, out-there ideas. Um, and, uh, and I also have lots of fun, cool, out-there ideas. But at the end of the day, it's like, mm, this is what we're doing. And yep. um, it's not to say that the idea isn't cool or even isn't good, but it's like, it's not what it's not what we're doing here we don't want to draw attention from this and this and this um but uh yeah yeah <laughs> all right okay uh railroaders finish off by saying i'd like to stay but i've got a tight schedule and i hate to be late don't forget to keep expressing yourselves and keep chugging along choo choo the railroaders <laughs> adam i can't hear you stop scratching your back and speak into the microphone I said, wow, all right. I muttered it. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't talk into your microphone, Trevor will come down I here know. and kill you. Uh, well, I have, I have the volume levels on there, so uh -huh. I'm good. Yeah. Um, I have a letter from guys. Oh, really? Yeah, oh boy. All right. Hello, father and father. <laughs> I don't like that. Ugh. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> Number one, how dare you? <laughs> Number Fuchsia, how do you make a course out of a definitive edition and not include me? Oh man, I see where this is going. Yeah. I, number three, number three, why is School Air going to be the second best deck in definitive edition? <laughs> that's Wow, Guy's uh, going to bat for someone else. That's impressive. Wow, yeah. That is it's new. this growth. <laughs> yeah. Number Squared, will I finally have that team up with Skate Blade? Number number V number the V. How much more devilish handsome is that Baron Blade? Devilishly handsome. This is devilish handsome. I know. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. You're giving guys the benefit. Most people, I do give the benefit of the doubt. You're giving guys the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, yeah I'm just I'm I'm skipping by these questions because we know we're not, yeah we're not bothering really answering them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> number fix. Uh, do you ever think of us completionists out there? Won't someone think of the completionists? <laughs> <laughs> number sleeve well hold on hold on i am gonna answer that one okay all right we are thinking of the completionists by making things yes completionists yeah. want us to make things so they can acquire them mm -hmm. it's the people that don't care that we don't care about <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> number sleeve it seems you did to some degree as you're going to offer sleeves to keep everything in mint condition for pledges but a, what about those of us who double sleeve? Oh, well, good news. Uh, Paul, do you want to talk about people who want more sleeves? Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually offer a plexiglass framing kit on the Kickstarter, <laughs> where we're going to send you a pallet of little, like, kind of 63 by 88 millimeter... Well, they're going to be a little bit bigger than that, like I guess. Those, 73 those by 98 millimeter. Yeah, protectors. like the baseball things yeah. with the bolts on the sides. Yeah. So then you can put every single deck <laughs> through there. And then uh, we're going to also be offering a special pledge level where you get a giant dresser that fits all of your cards ever for this game in plexiglass, in like eighth inch plexiglass. Yeah. Uh, Don't say ever, uh, Paul. On. And then also in twenty thirty five, we're going to in twenty thirty five, we're going to regret you said that when we put out the sixteenth set. Um, no, I've already solved this. What we're going to do is we're going to get surplus used cargo containers, okay. like we were talking about haikus before, like the forty foot long, right. like the and back of a, a tractor truck, yeah. right? And we'll sell those, and in there they'll be built in to both walls, right? Um, places in, to to store all of your plexiglass. In in um, case you actually want to play with any of these cards, also we'll be selling like a soda machine sized contraption that you, you load the them all in. into like cartridges and it will shuffle them for yeah. you yes yeah. and that's and perfect you're like oh i need a card from this deck you hit the button and, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah yes <laughs> i'm I, really I, excited for someone to be angry that when we don't actually make that thing i just promise <laughs> i'm already um, angry i'm hype about it no hold on hold on chris more hype <laughs> about the extent about there being so much demand that we that we just have to make it yeah, Chris, you were saying something. <laughs> yeah, so back when we worked in the same office, instead of the I a time that I barely remember, four walls. Yeah, uh, I, I actually did uh, make a playtesting deck for Christopher for one of the games we were working on at the time, and gave him plexiglass enclosed uh, 
cards mm -hmm. and he gave me such a look mm -hmm. that I <laughs> took them away and immediately got rid of it. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. it was a look <laughs> of such scorn and disdain that it haunts me to this day. <laughs> the, the actual sort of answer, I guess, is that we we will be coming out with sets of sleeves. That was the answer uh, I was looking that, for, Paul, right, but I appreciate fit, the answer you gave. No problem. That fit various standardized card sizes. There's been, like, there's so much demand. Like, this is a situation where Christopher and I acknowledge that we're, like... We're wrong. Wrong. Yeah. Right? Because Paul and I would never, never sleeve anything. anything. Right. Yeah. But we realize that there's, like, a very large number of people that want to sleeve things, and... Who are we to oh, deny you right. sleeving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do is come out with some sets of like nice quality sleeves for cards of different sizes, including all of the different sizes of cards that come in Definitive Edition, of which I believe there are three. Um, and on the Kickstarter, you'll be able to just get a pack that is, here's all the sleeves you need to sleeve all of the Definitive Edition, go. But then we'll offer, on just a recurring basis, on our web store through distribution, like nice sleeves that fit all of the sizes of cards in our game so if you want to pick anything up if you're at a convention picking stuff up from our web store you're like yeah i want to sleeve that and we'll have like specific card counts broken down for any particular game and what sizes they need etc so that's something that actually daryl and jen have been working on for a yeah. chunk of time so they both care about sleeving <laughs> um number eiffel if i stacked all the cards on top of each other how tall would it be tall enough to reach the stars well, if they're yes. sleeved with the plexiglass, then maybe. Then yes. Yes. I'll say definitively. Also, I like to think that anybody can reach the stars if they try hard enough. Like, you're wrong, but I yeah. like that statement. <laughs> Number nine, <laughs> but German nine. Um, well, people mistake the legacy deck as me. We're basically twins, you know. Number ultimate. No, really, how could you pass me up in the new core set? I'm clearly the best hero on the team of the Freedom Five and the Prime Wardens. I even have this laminated card certifying me as such. Hugs and kisses, guys. So one of the people on the playtesting forum <laughs> brought up that clearly guys knew about Definitive Edition far in advance, specifically because guys is retcon, uh, is, is the grappling hook, but uh, allows a play or a draw, which is how the Wraith's new grappling hook works. Hmm. So, but yeah. he's not drawn into the new art of grappling hook yet. Well, it's because it got retconned. Dang. But is he going to retcon the retcon? And <laughs> we'll how's see. that new grappling hook going to work? Oh, God, man. I have, Jeez, oh so many questions. God, I have no idea what's going to happen with that deck. <laughs> There's no way we can know. Guys is going to come at some point and, and give us that deck, and we're just going to print it as is. Yeah. Oh, That's how boy. we did the last one. That is how we did the last one. Don't bother playtesting it. It's fine. <laughs> Do you want to read a letter, Paul? <laughs> yes. I'm going to read a letter. So many people asking questions about sleeves over in the... <laughs> oh, I just <laughs> don't look the at the chat until we get to the yeah. go to the chat section. Yeah, and then we'll it's go just there too much. answer all this stuff. Yeah. All right, so the masked writer asks, Hey, Christopher and Adam, or as you're known when you're fighting crime, word man and art man. Sure, Definitive edition man. sounds awesome, but I do have one concern. Based on the images I saw in Polygon, it appears that text is significantly smaller than in Definitive Edition. Oh, That's... in Definitive Edition than in previous edition. Why? Smaller text is harder to read, and so much of the game consists of looking at other people's cards from across the table. On the same note, it looks like you replaced the all-caps comic-style font with a more normal-looking font. Why? The old font seemed more thematically appropriate, and capital letters used space more efficiently. Looking forward to Definitive Edition regardless, though. Thanks for all your hard work. Sincerely, The Masked Writer. All right, two answers to that. First off, uh, the text was smaller in the Polygon thing. And in fact, we got so much feedback about the smaller size text that we went through and increased all the text sizes on all the cards before we sent them to print. So the text is bigger now. There we go. Yeah. Problem solved. Thank you for your feedback. As for why we changed the font, this is I, I'm always amused when I get this feedback about like, oh, why did you change it from the comic book style font? Because one yeah. of the biggest complaints that we always had about the game from the first day we released it is like, oh, this comic book style font that does this cards is so hard to read. I don't like reading yeah. it. It looks like Comic Sans to me. And we're like, excuse me, we would never right. use Comic Sans for anything. Not even a yeah. child's birthday party. Um, this, was, this was a big internal battle, though. Yeah, we went back like, and forth we, a bunch. Yeah. And ultimately, we 
came up with a font that looks like the sort of font that would be used in a comic book, obviously not for dialogue or the action or anything, but like in the the credits page or in the letters page of the comic book, this is a sort of font that uh-huh. fits for that thematically, but is a more standard, like easier to read font by a wider number of people. And that uses space very efficiently, looks good from across the table. Um, and so we went with the most readable font that still thematically fit. Um, and do does that mean we lose a little bit of the comic book style with not having a feelingly hand-lettered font for game text? Maybe, but so many other things in the game are done to increase the feel and the the um, immersiveness that I feel like the maybe half step back that we lose that font, we gain other uh, areas. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but so, yes, we, we agree the font was too small. It's fixed. And we don't agree that the comic book style font is better um, in every aspect. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. And the decision that we ended up going with, I'm actually quite happy with. Uh, yeah. But it took us a long time to get there. Yeah, that was an extensively researched and debated kind of topic, actually, yeah. on those, those various mm-hmm. font slash typefaces. <laughs> well, uh, allow me to read a question from the Auburn audience. Granted. Greetings, creators of Sentinels. I hope your day is going well. If I took it. I was giving you a chance to answer, oh, but I mean, yeah, you can just snub yeah, them if you want. Yeah, that's, right? that's fine. They're just your fans. Oh, yeah. It's good. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had some questions about the definitive edition release of Sentinels of the Multiverse that I didn't think of during the AMA. Well, I don't know why I got this question because I don't know any of these answers. So perfect. I get to be the audience. Right. Surgeon. That's why you get the person. Right. Oh, oh then, wow. So it's yeah. like you think ahead on these things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when will the Kickstarter for the first game be open for backers? March 30th. Will each expansion after it be a year ahead? Less? Exactly a year ahead. Goal is a year. Yep. The goal is for guess. each game to come out at Gen Con of that year. Will Gen, each... Con, Gen Con season. The, Gen, the Con Gen season. Con season. Gen Con Regardless season. of whether Gen Con happens. If there's not a Gen Con that year, then <laughs> no game for you. <laughs> no, no. In fact, we just, yes, we just game for you. It. Like, no, we just get rid of it totally. No, okay. Okay. no it's enti- we're, tying it's, <laughs> we're tying the fate of Sentinels of Multiverse Definitive Edition to the fate oh, of the God. convention Gen Con. If Gen Do Con really ceases to exist, then Definitive Edition is gone. Yeah, it's not will, a ship I want to go down with. <laughs> will each set include remakes of previous variants? If so, will these variants be appropriate to the theme of the set or in the set the hero comes with? Yes and no. All and, variants, and, and that's will, what we're getting. All, okay, I will say all variants will be theme appropriate. That's, we, we, all variants will be themed to the box appropriate, and yes. you will see variants for characters over time. Many, many characters, many variants. Yes. Many will. Variants. Each game of the definitive edition be playable on its own. I mean, yes, that's how games work. <laughs> or will you need the base game to play them? I.e., are the expansions or standalones? Right. So each oh. of the mm. each of the expansions that we're putting out in the following years, we're calling expansions and are truly expansions in that they won't have all the HP spinners that the core game has. Um, right. Like they, there are certain things they won't have. However. Unlike in previous expansions we've done in the past, there will be plenty of content. There will be plenty of heroes, plenty of villains, plenty of environments in each set. So if you're like, okay, I don't need all of the secondary stuff, I just want to play, any of the expansions gives you the hero deck, villain deck, environment deck, and other things even, um, content that you need to play. But right. we recommend that you will also have the core game for the sake of the core game rulebook and all of the content in terms of tokens right. and stuff. Yeah. If right. you don't care about HP, like, like tokens or HP spinners or any of that kind of stuff then it is much easier to do the thing where like our group of friends is going to have one person has this expansion, one person has that expansion. Well, we can play them on our own and then when we come together, we can play all of them. Yeah. It's Which we've seen a lot of people do yeah. and it's a little bit friendlier yeah. for that use case that we didn't think of initially. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. But the, the idea is that we are still calling the core game is the core game yeah. and each of the following products are expansions because even though there is enough standalone content, in our opinion, it's missing certain important elements. Right, right. Thank you for taking the time to answer these questions. Welcome. You are welcome, Chris. Thank you for asking them. I am glad to answer and ask questions as needed. All right. So let's go back to the letter that we tagged at 11. I think it was 57. It was. So I'll start with this one. All right. Going back to the chat. Letter here from Ensign53, who writes, question for everyone present. Who was the hero you were most looking forward to seeing the Definitive Edition version of going into this project? Did any of the decks surprise you with how much you enjoyed them? 
Well, so here's mm. the problem. Going into this project, we don't know we were changing things as much as we were. Right. Um, but let's say the question is, like, which of the hero decks were you most excited about? Once we realized everything was changing, which one are you like, okay, well, I really am excited to see what the new blank looks like. And I'm going to let Paul and Adam answer this first, because Chris and I have yeah, seen dozens of iterations of both of, the, of all of these decks. And so, like, our answer I mean, uh, like... It's, it, it's kind of, you know, straightforward, but, like, I was really excited to see bunker yeah. and like bunker function well yeah and i actually have yeah, an answer was... this question i came up with one but yeah i i've got one actually yeah. that is really true so as soon as we realized we were doing like notable changes yeah i was actually most excited to see tempest i would say oh interesting mm. interesting because tempest yeah just, just a, b- a bunch of reasons like what tempest yeah. what tempest was for a bunch of balance and thematic reasons and where tempest would wind up and i must say that it's, it's cool yeah uh, for me specifically, it was Wraith. Mm-hmm. I uh, yeah. I really wanted her to feel more gadget heavy, and that's exactly where she ended up. Yeah. It's 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 perfect. I had come up with two answers to this question, assuming that one of my two answers would be taken by somebody else, and they weren't. So I'm going to give two answers, and it's Haka nice. and Fnatic. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Haka definitely feels more like Haka, and Haka's yeah. and Haka's oh, yeah. are Haka's Haka's are more important both when they're out and then when they go off um and fanatic way feels more like herself like the fanatic <laughs> always was on the right track but the 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 new tweaks to fanatic really bring her home so yeah i it, it brings me so much joy when people get fanatic down to 10 hit points and see just how much of a change it is yeah. mm-hmm. it, it's it's so delightful to watch people intentionally rush to that to that perilous <laughs> edge now mm-hmm. <laughs> uh adam do you want to read the letter at 1202 from some name i don't recognize 1202 yeah. oh i thought we answered that already not the second half Oh, okay. I guess, yeah. Right. Um, Daryl asks, uh, "Not at all a plant, uh-huh, but when is the Kickstarter, and what is the difference between the levels?" So we did already say the Kickstarter is March thirtieth. The yeah. two levels, there's two, as we said before, there are two levels. One of the levels is the game. You mm. also get the foil cards for free with it. The other level is the game. You'll also get the foil cards for free with it, with it, and also all of the sleeves you need to get. Uh, to, to sleeve every card in the game and also to sleeve all of the foil cards. There's enough sleeves oh. to, sleeve, to sleeve all the cards you're getting as part of that pledge level, both the game itself and the foil cards. Yep. Um, what is the price difference between the two? We actually don't know yet. We know that the the just the game pledge level is $50, um, but what is the pledge level for the game and all the sleeves? And the answer is like, we're still going back and forth with the factory on the sleeves. We're very happy with the sleeve quality that we're looking at, but we are figuring out like quantities, packages, costs, and that'll tell us what this, uh, what the, what the pledge level costs. Mm-hmm. But expect a similar sort of thing where like the pledge level for the just the game pledge level is fifty dollars mm-hmm. and the MSRP of the game will be fifty nine ninety five. So there will be a similar sort of thing for the sleeves. Oh right. Okay. Uh Paul twelve oh three is walking target. Is that yeah. done? Okay. Yeah. Scrolling yeah. down here. Yeah, twelve oh three. Twelve oh three, twelve oh three. Excellent. Walking target asks. Will the intention be for later variant hero cards to feature more comic covers like the first appearance ones do? No. <clears throat> I can I can say that no. definitively no. Right. First, the, appearance first appearances ones will always... only are the only ones that are covers. Yeah. Um, everything else will be alternate costumes and more more polished uh, we call it key art in the biz. <laughs> in the biz. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, looking for questions. Um, Maybe Klutz Lament at 12.11? Yep, that's you. So uh, Klutz Lament asks, can Unity play her bots if someone else gives her a play phase? And the answer is actually no, because it, it used to be you cannot play this thing during your play phase, and now that the play phase is codified as its own thing, yeah, no, you, you can't play bots that way. Right. You can play also, bots... You can play bots if somebody gives you a card to play, that's fine. Yes. But if somebody says, hey, take your play phase, you're taking your play phase and you can't play bots, you can't play mechanical go- golems during your play phase. 
this is also one of those areas where we got rid of the nonsense difference between put into play and play a thing. Yeah. Mm. So now there's also no distinction between putting something into play and playing a thing. You know Rather, what? Not just because <laughs> there's no distinction. There's no phrase of like put into play. Like right, right. you play a card. Yeah. I'm 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 thinking that we should go like we should go back to the drawing board. We have we still have a few weeks to finalize before this fully goes to print. We have one week to finalize before we have this one fully week goes to break. To finalize. So let's so bring time. back max HP increases. Oh you know what? Yeah max HP increases That's... and decreases. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good call. Good call. Let's good do call. that. Definitely, I, I can definitely play <laughs> test that in time. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, I think so. Um, all right. I see your comment, Ensign. It is not a question. Let's see. Scrolling forward. Scrolling forward. I think that I like that. Uh, I like that tank top, Lord Wolf Hunt. Nice. Yeah. Uh, All right, Akash Renard in the chat writes, will the telenovela verse be an environment in an expansion or will just each hero have a telenovela verse variant in each box? Mm -hmm. Mm. It's going to be an entire telenovela verse expansion. Yeah. Just the whole expansion, just yeah. telenovela. Actually, every subsequent product is just telenovela. It's just telenovela. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitive edition, the core game is not going to be, but everything It's regular, else. and then everything else telenovela. Yep. Really, that's what the events are. It's, it's, it's just, all telenovela it's, plots. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, Adam, do you want to read... Uh, do you want to read... See where we are. Do you want to read a book? Read a, a book? Comic? Read a story. Um, no, I had a Ooh, I had one wow. that I thought was for you, but then I clicked away and I okay. lost it. It's here. Uh, Twelve twenty three. Twelve twenty three. Quasi quirky. Uh, Paul will be twelve twenty five. Okay, yeah. Quasi quirky rides do so. We know that the Kickstarter is uh, three thirty, but do you know what time it will be going live? I must reclaim my first <laughs> back <laughs> title. Uh, I can tell you it'll be going live in the morning. Yeah. It's a surprise. You gotta just gotta just watch. F five, F five, F five. Yep. yep. Freedom five, freedom five, freedom five. Exactly. So I've got a question then from Twitsan. Oh. Right after that. Okay. Who asks, no matter how good the sleeve, a few will always rip. Are you going to include extra? And the answer is yes. So we're, what we're doing for on the Kickstarter specifically. So we're having and get to some manufacturing details. We're having the sleeve packs manufactured in uh, standard, and this is sort of a little bit up in the air as we finalize some stuff with the factory, but we're going to have them packaged in like packages of 50 or 100 or so sleeves, like standardized packs. On the Kickstarter, what you'll get is a little box with enough sleeve packs to sleeve all of Definitive Edition, but they will, to the by necessity, will be rounded up on purpose uh, so that you can deal with the situation. Like some of them rip, your dog eats some of them. You've got a few other cards you want to sleeve, whatever. It'll be rounded up to the nearest the nearest thing. So yeah, so you'll be covered in that case. Uh, to finish off the questions from the chat for now, uh, yep. Chris, do you want to read the Ensign question at 1225? I do. Uh, Ensign53 asks, can you confirm or deny will characters and expansions get no further variants in other expansions? I.e., will all of Harpy's variants be in Harpy's expansion, and no future expansions will have Harpy variants? I will deny that. There is currently that. no character named Harpy. <laughs> uh, that's, a good, uh, that's a good answer, Chris. There is currently no character named Harpy. Um, but uh, we, we, we can't say for sure anything uh um, but certainly we won't say for sure that characters expansions will all be only in their own sets um but th there are we're, we're working to make sure that there's not like an idea of like to get every variant you need to buy every set um but we also have certain well ways i mean no together. that's that's definitely true though you have to buy every set to get every variant well, to get every variant but, but not for every variant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right that's true but there's also <laughs> yes that's a, true a drive. Yes. there's also a drive the to keep people from having to 
go to conventions to get oh, right, all right. the, the other oh, yeah. variants will movie. only be any content will only be in these boxes there's not going to be oh well we're going to make this other deck on the side or we're going to make these variants and give them out of shows like everything will be in right. the boxes so except for foil things which will which you'll only get like as part of kickstarter stuff, kickstarter pre-order. or yeah. conventions yeah no yeah. Kickstarter conventions. Yeah. Are, do, I, I don't want to. I don't want to come down hard Maybe on where exactly because they might be on our web store. Like whatever we say right now, it will turn out to be wrong. <laughs> right. So that's why I'm saying like <laughs> let's let's not let's yeah just don't. <laughs> yeah. All right. Going you back, will, to, you won't have duplicates. I could say that too. Like yeah. If oh you if, unless you if buy you two of the same every, box. So if Harpy winds up being a character, and hypothetically you want speaking, get, hypothetically, and you want to get literally every variant for harpy you will not have to buy every single expansion i think that is safe to say wow 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 we'll see we'll see (laughs) (laughs) um (laughs) but if you want every variant for harpy but you don't want other expansions, what do you like i don't understand imagine Imagine. (laughs) yeah okay just saying maybe you want that all right let's who are we to judge uh, i i'm I'm incredibly judgmental. <laughs> All right, <laughs> judgmental. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the the adv- this uh, uh, scented in advance questions with a question here from the heroic shrimp, nice. who writes, "Greetings, greater than hosts." The letters page has been a great way to pass the time on long drives for work, and I always look forward to Tuesdays. I'm super pumped about the Definitive Edition. Everything so far looks absolutely fantastic. I'm especially excited about the first appearance variants, but I would like to know for the later sets. I know, another question about stuff you're still working on. I was wondering if there will be new, never-before-seen variants. I'm particularly hopeful that we'll get to see some deep cuts from Letters Page history. Okay, before I go on with this, I want to say, all right, team, are there going to be new, never-before-seen variants? Yes. Yes. Yes, there will yeah, be. There will definitely. be. Definitely. And Honestly. then what I'm going to do is I've got three questions here about three potential deep cuts from Letters Page history, and I'm going to offer it to each of you to answer it. And so here we go. We're going to start in the regular order. Um, uh, Trevor cut this thing that I'm about to say. Uh, do you guys remember what we talked about in advance to the, what the correct answer to this question is? I'm mostly asking because I think Paul's probably forgotten. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Great. I forgot too. Oh, okay, cool. Great. Good job, team. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to say a specific character, and you're yeah. going to say, I can neither confirm nor deny that this character oh, is going to be. Okay, 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 Trevor. All right, Trevor, we're coming back. Okay. All right, here we go. Adam. Yeah. The first one he mentions is Ghost Filled Fanatic. Is Ghost Filled Fanatic going to be in a future set? I can neither confirm nor deny that Ghost Filled Fanatic is in a future set. Paul, what about Werewolf Hunter Dark Watch? I can neither confirm nor deny that that will be in a future set, or that that's a real thing because I've never heard of that. <laughs> uh, and 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 Chris, what about classic Black Fist? I can neither confirm nor deny that that is going to be a thing, or is indeed a thing that I'm working on. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Uh, anyway, thanks for everything you do, the Heroic Shrimp. Heroic Shrimp, I hope you found all those answers incredibly satisfactory. <laughs> the thing is, I know about Ghost Fanatic and Classic Black Fist, like, lore-wise, existing, yeah. and I don't know about the thing I said, or that you asked me about. Werewolf, <laughs> Hunter, yeah. Darkwatch. I don't, right. I don't know about that thing. You, you definitely do. do you, we talked about... Are you, are, you, are you doing a bit? No, there's not, like, a special version of them. That's yes, there are. Hunters. Yes, there's a whole era of Dark Watch in which they it were specifically the end world of the Dark Watch comic. Or- How do I know this not, better than you? It's not a special. Time doesn't remember things. Like yes, you know, we even paper. talked on the air about like cool outfits they wore while they were fi- uh, hunting How, werewolves. Like, when the comic when the comic was ending its run, they went to, did this for like a year. No, I remember that, but like the fact I that I know a, okay. is that Adam does not remember things he talked about on the letters page. That's, That's I know very that true. true. It's incredibly true, <sighs> right? Adam doesn't remember things that he talked about at breakfast, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> but so, uh, so this, this, is, this is the thing that gets me out of is that you know you fun. forget these things and so then yeah. sometimes you like fight me you're like we never talked about that i'm like come on buddy well sometimes i sometimes i know we never talked about things but so, sometimes that's true i think it's because like christopher it's, plays episode of letters page where adam talked about a thing <laughs> I, I think it is more of like a stopped clock is right twice a day in the situation because you're like frequently like we never talked about that and once in a while you're right but most of the time i can be like nope this episode this time well maybe we're gonna do a whole letters <laughs> page episode say? i can <laughs> say christopher and adam talking about things chris burton can say 
the I, listenership I was of the hired letters page specifically because I know this stuff, so that I could be the backup memory. See, this is why Adam wasn't hired because he knows this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the reason Adam was hired. <laughs> And going through job descriptions, like is knowing a this stuff job. isn't right. Not underneath Adam's job <laughs> no. description. Yeah, or making mine. up the stuff. Certainly, Adam and I are the team that makes up the stuff, but Adam is not part of the team that remembers the stuff. Right. No, but it, with, with Brentwood, like, it was it was less work to hire someone and <laughs> that knows it all than to program some <laughs> bot that can talk to us from a USB drive, and then yeah. So that's why. <laughs> You want to continue? I suppose I'm I'm happy that I'm better than a bot. Is that all of it? That's me. I'm I'm next. Uh, I have a letter from <laughs> Jeff C. <laughs> Jeff C. writes, "Dear Christopher, Adam, and company." That's me. Yeah, you guys. You're you're the you're whole company. company. Hey, great listener, first time writer, and I'm absolutely stoked for the definitive edition of Sentinels of the Multiverse. One of the best things about the game, as it stands, is the use of deck styles and especially deck gimmicks to reveal the character through gameplay. Ivan Ramanat always needs time to get his doomsday devices up and running, no matter which side he's on. Harpy fluctuating between arcane control and birds everywhere. Akash Thria making the environment her arsenal, etc. So, two related questions. First, which enhanced edition deck are you proudest of from a character standpoint, as opposed to a strictly gameplay standpoint? Hmm. This is just another way of asking for favorites. Um... <sighs> I constantly trying to circumvent that. Yeah. Uh, um, blah, 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 blah. Boy, character. What's like the trick really is that like good... the I don't the, the, like the characters. It's not that the characters change that much as the over the course of us making definitive edition. You've heard the characters not really change, but be better defined over the ten years of us playing of making this game and three yeah. years, four years of us doing this podcast. So like that's the that's the place where. That's the place where you've seen, yeah, the characters um, change. I think evolve. that, um, okay, ideal. I think that. Well, so I think that Wraith, in particular, we have a much better idea of who she is now than we did, and so like I, I that's comes through in the art and in the writing. Okay, so um, but hold on, this is not answering the question. I just I just looked at the question again. It says which enhanced edition deck, which original version of Sentinel's deck oh, are you most proud deck. of from a character oh. standpoint? And then the, which pr- which oh. and then the next question is which uh which but from the definitive, definitive edition, edition character are you most proud okay. of? Okay. Okay. So which so the, the problem is so I'm going to answer them in reverse order. In definitive edition, we are proud of all of the decks from a character standpoint that all of yeah. the decks from the character standpoint nail the characters. And that's the thing yeah. that was the thing we wanted before whereas i would say that in the first edition tachyon's deck both in terms of mechanics but also in terms of thematics and story really nailed the character of who tachyon is now her different edition one does it better but tachyon's deck nails it really well whereas like what adam was saying wraith's deck doesn't really nail her that well it's good right. it's on the right track it's there but like the flavor text isn't quite right the art isn't quite right and the mechanics aren't quite right and so wraith we did a much better job of a, a definitive edition than we do in original edition i actually think that's the case with most of the decks yeah even like the... i said even tachyon we get better at yeah but... Well, um, but like Ra is, oh, is better, better now. Yeah. Fanatic. But like better Captain now. Cosmic Hawk and Archon Adam aren't that different. Um, they're not not different, but they're not that right. different. Yeah. yeah, the big difference with Arjun Adept is you actually see him play his instruments. You see the effects that they're having. <laughs> right. Instead yeah. of just like, we, we tried to get rid of just like the item card where it's just like, here's a picture, a static picture of an item. On a shelf. Sitting there. Right. <laughs> Everything is a panel from a comic. Right. Like, why is why is it here? Sometimes item so. sits on shelves and panics and panels and comics, Adam. That's, I mean, that's true, but it's usually when it's like, oh, there's a danger looming from this item. Ma, ma, ma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so... There we go. We got there. <laughs> Paul or Chris, do you have anything to add to that discussion? Not, not especially. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> yes. Yeah. In, in Enhanced Edition, I was pretty proud about how the Idealist changed from uh, the Sentinels uh, deck to to the Void Guard version. Sure. Um, I was really proud of Harpy like in, in Enhanced Edition because it really had that feeling of just, just a little too much to manage. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but in the the core game, in definitive um, edition, I mean, yeah, in the definitive edition core game, I'm just really happy with with all of them. I yeah. mean, I yeah, all of the little tweaks and changes are to just give everything so changes. much more life. Yeah. 
and the simple fact that like all of the a lot of the constructs are now giving heroes reactions instead of uh, m making it so that when the construct is hit, they get a they get a thing. It's just it really nails that flavor of I am giving you this ability, and it's giving you the ability through the construct, not the construct being like this thing that when you poke it does healing right. juice or like makes you use a power or something. Yeah. Yeah, the construct should have been if we we're gonna do it that way, they should have been like grapes that you hit it and it juices and yeah. Or Which would have been pretty fruit. awesome to be honest. Yeah. Uh let's see. Uh Adam, finish it off. Oh. Uh eagerly awaiting the definitive edition Kickstarter, Jeff C. All right, I've got a question to read now. Mm -hmm. That's true. The question is from Joe Steelok. Hi, CNA. I have a question about Argent Adept that recently crossed my mind when looking at the gorgeous new art for the Definitive Edition. Is there a method to the madness that is his different card keywords? The cards I am talking about are, their ongo are the ongoing cards with the subtype Melody, Rhythm, and Harmony, and their accompanying keywords Perform and Accompany. As a complete boob when it comes to everything musical, I wonder if the words have any connection between mechanics and musical terms. I'm going to stop you right what? there. Yeah. I'm going to stop you right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you are a self-pronounced complete boob when it comes to musical terms, yes. or when it comes to musical things, there is it makes a lot of sense that you would not understand what's going on with Arjun Adept's card types, keywords, effects, because that is like... They are tied together inexorably. So, right. Paul, you've got a bunch of questions coming up here. With each yeah. one, ask the question, pause, and I will answer the question because it's, okay, it's, awesome. it's very straightforward. Right, exactly. Um, so, uh, why do melodies only have perform? Right. So, cards, these cards, melodies, harmonies, and rhythms um, have perform and accompany text, except, as you noted, melodies only have perform text. And that's because melodies, which is the melody of the song, which is like, if you think about like the main line of a song, the main line that a singer sings or the main line that you're listening to, the main notes, that is the melody. A melody is never an accompany. A melody is only a perform. Because if you think about performing, performing, when you're performing a song, you are the, the person performing the song, you're doing the main thing on stage. If you're accompanying, that means somebody else is performing and you're accompanying them. A melody I say never. Don't say never. There's some songs that have counterpointal me melodies and stuff. But point being, melodies are performed. Melodies aren't, for the most part, accompanied. In They're general. performed in general. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do harmony cards have anything to do with working in harmony with other heroes? No. You you got to think about it in music terms. Like, sometimes, yes, sure. But, like, all of our genetics deck is about working in harmony with other heroes. Harmony cards. So, melodies are the main line to talk about. Harmonies are the notes around that main line that support that main line, um, that, that flesh out the sound of that main line. So, harmony cards are about being... Uh, harmonies, when you're playing music, you're playing melodies, you're playing harmonies, and you're playing it to a specific rhythm, which we'll get to in a second. Um, right. And so, melodies is the main sound, the main notes, the main line of the song harmonies are the notes around it that flesh out that sound that, that accompany the melodies um and that rhythms are the, the 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 rhythm that you're playing at the tempo the meter the beat um and uh so that is that is what, what the harmonies are is they're the things that accompany the melodies and that's why harmonies can be performed but harmonies also have um a company text yeah like if you're watching someone sing a sea shanty on TikTok, the first person to make the video is singing the melody. They're and they're performing, performing the melody, right? Yeah. Then the other people come along and duet them or whatever, and they often, sometimes they'll just sing the same melody with them, right. but other times they'll sing a harmony, which like sounds nice when it goes with that main first video sound, but mm -hmm. isn't on its own the actual main melody tune. So those second things are accompaniments. They are harmonies. The name of the ship was the Billy O T. The exactly. winds blew hard. Her bow dipped down and blow me, bully boys, blow. Right. So that's the melody that you're performing. And, and then, then if like I, if there was like a descant above that or some other things going on, mm -hmm. that would be accompanying. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. right. All right. Is rhythm is our rhythm card something about Argent Adept keeping the rhythm flowing in the game? Nope. They are the rhythm of the... I mean, like, a little bit, but no, it's much more about rhythm cards are the rhythm of the beat. And so all of these things have intentions of, like, the melodies are your primary things, your harmonies are your secondary things, and the rhythm is the you want to keep the stuff going all the time mechanically. But also rhythms are the accompanying beat of the melody harmony music. So, 
Yeah. And that's why uh, rhythms can be both performed or accompanied. Because, yeah, rhythms can be performed. You can have, like, a main instrument rhythm um, a thing that's happening. But m rhythms are much more commonly accompaniment than they are performance. But both are possible. Yeah. So. Why were the three first words used as card subtypes and perform and accompany used to indicate abilities on those cards? Great, because music is made up of melodies, harmonies, and rhythms. Those are the three building blocks of music. So that's the type of cards. You play melodies, you play harmonies, you play rhythms. And then you use your performs and your accompanies to activate those parts. Yeah, because in musical terms, not my favorite wrong, Christopher, but like, like you either are the main performer or... You're an accompanist. Yeah, accompanist. there's a little bit of things like, like if you're talking about the yeah. band Rush, I would call all three of them performers. That's you know, but like the, I'm talking less about the idea of someone as a performer and more the idea of like, oh, I perform a melody, I accompany that melody with a harmony. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Or is it just words you chose to make the mechanics more thematic? I never just choose yeah. words. <laughs> I love your pod and everything you do. I'm really looking forward to the definitive edition, even though I have a jam-packed collector's case at home already. Stay frosty, Joe. Thank you. Joe. Yeah, to 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 pull the curtain back on that one a little bit. From the get-go with Arjun Adept, um, it was always about music. It was always about assembling a song through your cards. Yep. Um, and that, that was always core to the the design of the character. Um, before we had those names on on cards, they so those names just kind of came out of that. Even Adam, you're incorrect. Uh, the, the the it was designed around those names. I remember well, I was uh, in what... I was in the back of a van for a long road trip with Paul. Uh, two of us trying mm -hmm. to to uh, Georgia. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we went so down to Georgia. The, you, like you're yeah. right that it was the mm -hmm. character was always about that, but the mechanics the mechanics are entirely entirely designed around that musical that's, structure of, right that's what i mean they come out okay. of the musical structure but you, you were saying that like you were saying that like the the cards existed and the names were applied to them no no nope. no, 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 the, no the card no, types the, and the performance the, companies the musical structure existed first yes. and we said this is a musical character right. and from that came right. the, the i just want to make sure that people types. aren't thinking that we wrote the cards and then we applied keywords to them no no, no i no, built no. the structure of the keywords and the performance company and then applied mechanics to them yeah so, yeah all right all right. So then, uh, did you want to finish that off? He did. I did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to read a new letter? Then I, I do from the Mage of Magic Place. I salute you, the effulgent Adam, <laughs> the luminous Christopher, the brilliant Paul, the resplendent Braithwaite, the ethereal Trevor. Tis I, the radiant Mage of Magic Place. I'm actually going to keep doing this. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> No, uh, you're not. I would like to see. Well, for one, that <laughs> actually legit hurts my throat. And yeah. Two, it's really causing everything to spike. So I don't want to hurt anybody else. Uh, too late. Tis I, this radiant mage of magic place. First, I would like to see that I'm. I would like to see that I'm pleased that the environments finally make Probably sense. Say. You know, no, maybe the, the, the mage of magic it's place writes in a weird yeah, way. So yeah. just go with it. I always banned players from destroying targets with environment destruction at my table, since it always seemed odd to me that Ra or Legacy would have to punch Anubis or Bathory a few times to defeat them, Bataki and running through a fire would somehow destroy it. Mm. That's actually how putting out fires works. I, I mean, you, you can put out a fire. Right, right, right. No, no, the thing, no, he, anyway. the thing he was saying was he banned... destroy Anubis. Right, the thing he was saying was that he banned environment destruction from destroying targets, not from destroying... Ah, that um, actually makes perfect sense. Yeah, except I, that, who, like... Who am I to question the Mage of Magic Place's wisdom? Well, I, I, I question am... the wisdom of uh, changing the mechanics of the table just because you feel like it. But, hey, that's your call. Um, I mean, that's what you <laughs> We've do. Never you done that before. That's what I do. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> I get to make the rules of the you. game. I... Oh my god. I'm, I'm questioning and now for some questions. People. Yeah. <laughs> One, you have in this core set two scenarios for each villain. One will be standard and one critical, reminiscent of the villain variants of yore. As you get more expansions, what? they will include more variants for the heroes of this pack. Will the same be true for villains? Will we get more events for these villains that make sense in other expansions? Like the story of Nightmist helping the Matriarch when her powers go berserk in the Dark Watch box. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe not that one. Maybe that one. Who can say? But yeah, you'll get more. Uh, B, you said you're getting rid of mini expansions for this run. Would that mean that every hero variant would be included in the main box, or would you have a product similar to the variant collection of the original run? So the letter specifically says, will be included in a main box, not in the main box. And the answer is, yes, every variant will be in a main box. Yeah. 
Triangle. It seems so far, every hero deck save for Legacy now has a central gimmick. Uh, Fnatic becoming stronger when weak, Haka and Tempest seemingly have something going on. I, I like how that's a gimmick <laughs> of having something going on. That's a gimmick. Where that wasn't true in the original core set. Something. Only Tachyon and Bunker had a central gimmick. Haka had some, but it wasn't a core mechanic of the deck. Was that an intentional choice on your part? I would say Haka's, Haka's were a core mechanic of the deck in the past. Um, and I would say that Legacy does have a quote-unquote gimmick, which is that he is a support character who really is inspirational and supporting for his team. Um, I, yeah, I, I disagree with the premise that, of the question. I think that every character has always had a, a gimmick, a method by which they do the thing they're doing, a, a central through line of what their intentions are as a character. And if anything, we've gotten better at displaying that, but... like, I think that's the key thing. I, I think that, that while you, you are correct and that they've always had a gimmick i think we've leaned harder into it with definitive edition to the point that it's much more readily observable sure previous gimmicks were perhaps too subtle for the average observer uh <laughs> dolphin i always found baron blade a poor villain for new players because the game was over so quickly that the new players didn't have a chance to get acclimated i prefer ambuscade gloomweaver and akish buddha really ambuscade hmm? Uh, since if I play a complicated deck like Scholar Knight Mr. the Harpy and my new player's more simpler decks, we end up with a longer but still rather easy game. Seriously, Ambuscade? You can be over so quickly. Anyway, uh, would you say that Akash Buddha is still new player friendly? If you've already designed them and are willing to tell us, are Gloomy and Frenchie still rather easy as well? well we're not going to talk about Gloomy or Ambuscade. Um, part of the thing that's changing in Definitive Edition is no longer French. Uh, but um, I would say Akash Buddha is a bit harder than she used to be. Um, I still think that Baron Blade is the best first player experience. If it's being, if it's getting over too quickly, it's maybe because you, the experienced player, are going too hard. Like, take it easy, play somebody like Legacy and Arjun Adept and just be supportive to your teammates and let them deal with beating Arjun Adept, uh, beating Baron Blade. If right. they defeat Baron Blade in only a 20 minute game, great. That's still 20 minutes of learning the mechanics at the table. And then after that, sure, then go play Arjun Adept, then go play somebody else. But in my the opinion... The nice thing about like, Baron Blade though is that he has every type of card in his deck. That right. you, He's got one shots, he's got ongoings, he's got devices, um, he's got two different ty types of, of cards with targets, which are both minions and devices. Devices. Um, he does one thing and then flips the other. Like he's really a primer on the type of game that Sentinels the Multiverse is. And so, even if you feel like it's over too fast, great. Then play another game after that. But yeah. yeah. So here's a question for you, Christopher. Related to that, are yeah. we including in the Definitive Edition core game Baron Blade? Because... No, he's not in the core game. No, no, no. I kind of set up for a teaching game. Yeah, we are. We are. So Baron essentially, Blade. what we're yeah. doing is in the core game. Um, like, and we're saying we're not prescribing heroes or environment. Like, play whatever heroes you want. Play whatever environment you want. We've given you a difficulty chart or a complexity chart for heroes. So pick some low complexity heroes, and we've given you. This is one thing that we haven't told people. There's a complexity chart for heroes. There's a difficulty chart for villains. Um, there's also a peril chart for environments. That's a new thing where heroes have complexity, villains have difficulty, and environments have peril. Um, and uh, so pick whatever environment sounds interesting to you. Pick whatever heroes you feel like you're you're able to handle, and then play against Baron Blade and the. The, the Baron Blade deck in the game is coming, in the box, is coming stacked in a particular order, and you play in that order. You put the card down, the deck down, you don't shuffle it. The, the, the top card is the mobile defense platform, you put that into play, and then you just go down the line and you play the game as set. Um, or it might be the bottom card is mobile defense platform. Anyway, the rule book of Tarnus. Or is Gab. And it's not, no, it's ISIS. Um, it's terrorists. Um, but anyway, so uh, you, you you play it through that order. And the rule book will also, um, I actually just think it's hey, the order. Book. Anyway, so you the, can reset it. It has the order that says yeah. this is the order to put it in if you want to do the teaching game again. But that is, and that's a that's a well-tested, well-oiled, like you play it in this order. This is the the ideal experience for understanding Baron Blade. And yeah, it's not a, it's not a long game, but a, in my opinion, a teaching game shouldn't be a long game. Because the thing that tends to happen a lot with long games, not of Sentinels Multiverse, but other long games, like if the four of us here on this podcast we're going to sit down to play a game that i know and i'm teaching it to three of you and it's like a two-hour game what'll happen is you'll get to the, like the half hour point of the game and then around then the three of you will be like oh i get it oh, i wish we could just start over now so we yeah. get to, you're better off to be like hey we're gonna play this game don't worry about starting over don't worry about mistakes we're gonna play it all the way through it's gonna take a slightly less time than a regular game of sentinels and multiverse will and now let's play another game now that you understand the concepts of the things that can happen over the course of the game yeah and something that we talk about to uh, playtesters, or not playtesters, but uh, demoers, rather, like citizens and things at conventions, mm -hmm. is if you know the game really well and you're trying to get other people into it, if that's your ambition, 
right? Don't uh, try to do all the work. Like you will be in a situation where you're playing the game and you can see how you can just easily defeat Baron Blade really fast, mm -hmm. right? You can make that game end real quick, right? If you're playing a basic Baron Blade game. But if you're trying to teach it to a bunch of people that have never played before, don't do that, right? Like the goal of a teaching game should never be that the experienced player plays optimally. It's yeah. instead that the experienced player who is the teacher in that case, trying to get other people into the game plays in a way that makes everybody else learn the game and have yeah. fun. A lot which of is times a very different play style. When, when I've run demos, like uh, I would I would stack my I'd play Legacy and stack my own deck to put the cards that do things for other people. Yeah. Also. Yeah. So Me too. I'm like, I will never oh, do damage just, when I'm playing right. that demo game. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's it's all about maximizing fun for the new players. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's then like, once oh, you've done look that at how hard once. You hit. Because of them. Yeah, exactly. Once you've played through that once, and like, oh yeah, we kind of get it. That's a that was a fun, quick game, and I felt like I did stuff. Then you're like, okay, now let's play someone else. I'm gonna not play. So like, don't play Arjunad after a complicated character in that first game. Play a simple character that makes the other hero shine. Play like then a once you've played that 20 minute game, right? And the other people are hopefully into it. Then you're like, now let's play another one. This villain's a lot harder, and I'm gonna play this nonsense guy. Yeah. Don't worry <laughs> about it. You can see all the nonsense they're doing, and it'll be fun. Right. You kind of have the hang of it, and then you can. Legacy yeah. is the best character to play as if you're introducing to other yes. people. Yeah. Like, yeah, and I would say like we've we've said twenty minutes. I honestly don't think that you'll do it in twenty minutes. Occasionally, you probably will, but I think that if you're playing it with the, in that way, where you're playing Legacy, you're supporting your teammates, and you're explaining how the game works as you play it, I think it'll be like at fastest a thirty minute game. And I don't yeah. think that's too fast for a first game of Sentinels. Of yeah, the yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I love most about Definitive Edition, which is just a very minor thing, is the fact that Baron Blade no longer has multiple MDPs. Yeah. He just has the one mobile defense platform. Oh. <laughs> I, I know, it's, it's a silly thing. Alright, finish that letter but, off. We can go back to the chat. I do thank you, the lot of you, those greats of these greater than games. This most mathematically illiterate mage of Magic Place, who having seen the past successful ten years of the Sentinels Comics universe, wishes you 998 more. Oh no, thank you. <laughs> It just makes me Wait, tired what? thinking about it. That's a weird number. <laughs> why? Why is it a thousand and eight? That's that's how many years of Sentinels this mage wants to exist. Okay. All right, let's go back to the chat, <laughs> uh, guys. Right. I'm going to start with a Sonvar letter at twelve thirty three, and we'll move down from all right. there. Uh, all right, we're going to start here with the Sonvar letter. Sonvar, Hound Lord of Power, writes, Ahoy hoy, bullpen. Do you expect to do a Kickstarter for each expansion for Definitive Edition, or is it specific for the core set? Also, how much more work have you made for the people writing the History of Sinnoh Comics book as you've started on Definitive Edition? Mm. Lastly, what made you decide on the card numbering, like H-L-E-G-O-1, and what will you do with Baron Blade for, when that, uh, uh, for that when Vengeance comes around? Okay, so... I'm going to answer in reverse order. Uh, the card numbering, H-L-E-G-O-1, you're referring to the first card alphabetically in Legacy's deck. I can tell that because H means hero, L-E-G means legacy, and 0-1 means the first card in that deck um, alphabetically. And so those little, there's a tiny little code in the corner, and the main reason for those numberings, uh, it's not useful for anything except for when somebody has a missing card or a damaged card, they can contact the warehouse and be like, oh, I'm missing this specific card, and we can keep things sorted much more easily. That was a request from the warehouse side of things, and we're like, we're happy to make that happen on those tiny corners of the card there. So that's what that's doing. Uh, what will we do for Baron Blade when Vengeance comes around? I don't know what you're talking about. Vengeance? I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Uh, the next question is, how much more work have you made for the people writing the History of Central Comics with Definitive Edition? Not that much more with Definitive Edition. Lots with the letters page. Every time we do an episode <laughs> of the letters page, we make stuff up, and then Darren's like, what is this? <laughs> But the def but uh, definitive edition is less of a coming up with new stuff, some new things, and yeah. more of a harvesting of the stories that we've crafted over these many years. Yeah, a lot of it was was looking at the spreadsheet and finding where things already fit. I had a couple of things from like, uh, oh, such an example. I'll say this. I'm not gonna. Uh, no. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. First question. Edition is mostly like mining lore in the, that already you have already made. Right. It's like right. putting incorporating that into the game more. So yeah. Uh, last question. Do you intend the last question, which was the first question? Do you intend to do a Kickstarter for each expansion for Definitive Edition, or is it specific to the core set? Paul, 
Uh, we don't know yet. So that's a really open question. So the reason why we're doing a Kickstarter for the core set is because Kickstarter is a really good platform for letting people know that something exists and also a really good platform for uh, gauging demand so that we know how much to print and also gauging demand in a way that is provable so that if we want to get certain stores to pick up definitive edition, especially like mass chains and stuff like that to try to pick it up. Or if we want to get more partners to do non-English language versions of the game, having a very successful Kickstarter is a really uh, definable good way to like, look at these actual numbers that they're kind of objective numbers you can prove. And it kind of helps with that, with that kind of pitch. Um, that said, there's a lot of downsides of doing a Kickstarter. Uh, the it's Kickstarter a takes a cut. Work of the money and is a ton of work to set it up. And so we don't know. So what we're gonna do is just, it, what it depends on is how the Kickstarter for Definitive Edition goes, how Definitive Edition does in general in sales after the Kickstarter, and also how the um, release of various other unrelated projects that we're not going to Kickstarter with, but are maybe doing pre-orders with, or just putting them out there in the web store, how those go. So there's a lot of open, open questions that we will have answered in the next six to nine months, and then we will decide. So, um, Trevor, cut this real quick. Um, walking Target, I'll get you those covers um, when the time comes. Yeah, it'll have to be when the game comes out. Yeah, because there's some, I, there's some spoilers in there. But I'll 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 share you on um on a folder though that has has all of the covers um, completely un unimpeded. Yeah, unsullied. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, looking for questions. So it seems like the next question is until twelve fifty two. Uh, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of chatter. There's a lot of chatter. Uh, yeah. You guys chat a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Adam, if you want to take the Jay Z question. Yeah. So Jay Z asks. So everyone has mechanics questions, but I have lore questions just to be annoying. Jay Z, you're not annoying. We like. Those are the ones we yeah <laughs> yeah. Um, does Absolute Zero's iconic line "Better board in here than dead out there" still show up somewhere since it's not on the card it used to be on? Uh, a slightly different version of it, it's referenced, but it doesn't show up on a card because, yeah, like the only time that you would get that line from him is before he's even Absolute Zero, mm. and so. Uh, but there, but there is a, a a nod and a wink to that line on a card, which you've probably seen. Yeah. Um, is one of the people in that art that Adam posted the Freedom Five security guard, guards Don Vickers, and if so, which one? The answer is yes. Yeah, is Adam, the guy you know on the right. One? The guy on the right. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember it. The guy but... with the mullet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, that's Don Vickers. Nineties Don Vickers. Nineties. Nineties. Yeah. Nineties Don Vickers. Uh, all right. Where are we in this list now? Uh, maybe Amelia at twelve fifty seven. I'm not that far yet. Okay, fine. I think that's to the first one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Paul. Yep. Paul. Yeah, I'm looking. Amelia at twelve fifty seven. Okay, good, good, good. It's just to you. So when they when they have me on them, then I see them. I was right, yeah. right, that's why we say the time I, stamp. I know. I was looking at the whole time. I'm like, I'm in tw the twelve fifty seven. Is this all right? Hey Google, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I had an essay about something from Wikipedia that it found, but it felt the need. All right. <clears throat> Amelia Ryans asks, you mentioned a while ago that you loved cruel choice cards like Baron Blade's Devious Disruption. Are there still cards like that? Are there any that you're willing and able to tell us about? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's this card in Baron Blade's deck called Devious Disruption. Um, that is a really good example of that sort of thing. Yeah. And so, so you're confirming that Devious Disruption is still in Baron Blade's deck. Yeah. I am. You heard it here. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> uh, but yes, there's there. That's that's a good. It's a it's a good way to do things because it's not like, um, actually, yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of environment cards that do that too. Uh, that's a it's a thing that we like to use where it's like, okay, there's lots of ways to deal with this. It needs to be dealt with. It if you don't deal with it, something bad will happen. Um, right. Megalopolis is built around that a lot. So it's like you've got to one way or another take care of these problems, or they will take care of themselves. 
Because the Megalopolis deck changed quite a lot. I quite think. a lot, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris, do you want to read the Worms sponsor at 1258? Uh, 1258. Worm sponsor asks, what is the most memorable evil laughter moment you all had when making Definitive Edition? Hmm. Evil laughter moment. Hmm. I don't, know, I don't really have a lot of evil laughter time. moments. There wasn't anything that we made that was particularly like mean. It was all just like, oh, that's so good. Right. You know, that's like, the most. That's most. Yeah. Right. We're, we're, there's a lot of us patting ourselves on the back. Yeah, which is why it's good to work collaboratively, so you can pat the other person on the back. They pat you right, the back. you go. Oh, good thinking. Oh man, thank you, Adam. You're just so handsome, so handsome. Yeah. Oh man, and you're you're rich in personality. Oh, oh, no, too kind, too kind, too kind. <laughs> Chris, I really liked your mohawk. Thank you. Wiggly I side did... and everything. I thought it brought a character. It it definitely brought a character. Panache. That is a word you could use. Thank you. Paul, um, yeah. I have always been envious of your ability to sing bass. Mm. Oh. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you want to get back to the letters? I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll come back in here. We have one more chunk of, of letters to read from in advance, and then... We'll do the chat, and then we'll call it a day. We're a little bit over time, but yeah. things are going well here, cool. so I think we're fine. Yes. So when I get back to the chat, we'll be around 1. Yes, we'll come to the 1 o'clock right. mark. All right. Nice. All right. Uh, going back to letters written in advance, I have a letter from Brian Jewett, who writes, I wanted to start out by saying that when Definitive Edition was first mentioned on the podcast, and when it was first more broadly announced in the Polygon article, I didn't think it'd be a product for me. I had already had access to all the stuff for the card game, and reinvesting in it all over again when I could be getting an entirely new board game was a big ask. But the enthusiasm with which you spoke about it in the letters page is infectious in a way that doesn't make me do toxic damage to myself. And you've sold me on it. The passion for remaking your baby to be better than it was in your voices was a more effective pitch than just about anything I could imagine. I want to continue by forgiving Christopher for lying to me about which expansion Gloomweaver is going to be in and sending me tumbling down a small rabbit hole about what you could be planning for him that Dark Watch wasn't the correct expansion to release him in. Yes, sorry about that. <sighs> On to actual questions. Looking at what has been released so far, it seems to me that, broadly speaking, the issue with mixing old content with new is not that you're going to run into a situation in which the rules don't make sense, but that the speed at which games operates means that old decks will feel clunky. Mm -hmm. Old heroes won't be able to keep up with new villains, and old villains will get blown out of the water by new heroes. Do you feel that is an accurate view of things? Or once I see more content, do you think I'll get a better idea of why mixing and matching causes issues? Either way, some soul braver than I is going to try fighting a Oblivion with new, with new hero decks, just you wait. Um, so yeah, clunkiness is a big part of it. Um, mm -hmm. There's also some mechanics that, like we talked about, are kind of being phased out or changed in certain ways. Um, the big thing is that they just weren't play tested together. It's not intended to work together. And so, sure, while some we things we don't know, right? While some things will work, we can we can uh, you know. Uh, speak to the efficacy of these things not at all and we have no intention of trying we're not going to spend any time play testing old content with new content because old content is all extant and it's great and it works together and that goes over there it's done and it's fantastic play sentinels the multiverse have a great time we're mm -hmm. making this new thing called sentinels multiverse definitive definitive edition sentinels the multiverse definitive edition is based on the old stuff there will be many things that feel very similar there'll be many things that feel very different and rather than spending any time trying to trying to justify that that di divide we're just starting fresh and not letting the the baggage of the previous stuff affect us moving forward anything to add to that folks no all right no so, i think that, cool. I, I do think it's a good assessment about the speed of things that yeah. Like, yeah, very much so yeah. new definitive edition games move much smoother and quicker yeah. and it, finish fact, quicker in that's... general that's almost word for word what several of the playtesters said who did in fact try to mix the the two mm -hmm. was that the the old people felt uh old people the the older <laughs> versions felt like they were having a, a tough time keeping up yeah 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 it definitive edition gets the game out of its own way for sure yeah 
Right. Yeah. Very much. So that was the remarkable thing about playtesting. When Christopher and I ran through everything and stuff like that, we were like, wow, this is like... We had only like two games take over an hour, and both of those were for playtesting reasons. Both of those were like, hold on, I need to write stuff on cards reasons. And they always feel like fun action-y the whole time. Mm -hmm. And... uh, exciting and like your engagement is going on and the game wraps up when the game is done it's just really nice i yeah that's one of the reasons why on the kickstarter we said like you know what we're gonna do like anyone that is skeptical like exactly in the situation that uh, ryan was here and doesn't know if it's for them or not don't worry what we think is that if you play it you will discover it's for you and we feel that so confidently that if you back the kickstarter and get the game and then you're like this is not for me it's cool like i just want to play my old set that's totally fine valid feeling send it back to us we'll give you a refund and so, cause, and we feel so confident that if you play, you're like, oh yeah, this is awesome. I also want this. So. Yeah. All right. Continuing on with this letter, will the game still have the same rules for how Nemesis icons work and affect each other? And the answer is yes. Uh, we played with a bunch of different ideas of how Nemesis could work differently. And at the end of the day, we were like, okay, since this is a rule, it's not printed on the cards. There's just an icon. Here's the icon. There's an icon. The advantage of the Nemesis icon rules is that it's straightforward, it's simple, and here's a fun secret. A lot of people are like, yeah, but sometimes the Nemesis icon rules, I just ignore them. That doesn't break the game. It doesn't break the game if you ignore the Nemesis rules. Some people like to ignore them, some people don't. I like to use them. I think that they're fun, I think they're interesting, I think it gives a little extra thing, and they're thematic. But since there's going to be a rule that is based on just an icon, and there's no other information to remind you or let you know that it works, we either needed to make it more uh, more clear, more obvious, put text around it, and make it more engaging and interesting, or keep it the way it was, or get rid of it altogether. And getting rid of it altogether doesn't seem worth it. So a rule that's like, here's an extra thing that's a couple, a plus one in one direction and a plus one in the other direction, and if you don't do it or you forget to do it, nothing is broken or damaged. Yeah. It stays as it is. So. That is, it is, that is a 90% thematic rule. Right. And it, and it helps and it makes a difference in the game, but if you forget yeah. it or whoops it in some way, don't worry about it. Right. Uh, letter continues. As part of the Kickstarter, do you plan to live stream Great in the Game staff playing with new cards to give people a feel for how the new game works? Man, I would if we were all in the same place, but we're not in the same place, and we won't be yeah. in the same place during the Kickstarter. Um, we have some ideas for doing some tabletop simulator things, but it's not the same. It's not as good. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, I've thrown salt over my shoulder, knocked on wood, and turned around three times before, and spat before asking this question. With all these precautions in place, if the Kickstarter doesn't meet your expectations in terms of funds raised, can we be confident that product line will continue? All right. So, a fair question. Hmm. If the Kickstarter... So, the question is, if the Kickstarter doesn't meet the expectations in terms of fund raise, our expectation is that the Kickstarter will fund. And people are like, wow, why are you launching a Kickstarter that you're confident it will fund? I said this last time, and I'll say it again. If you are about to launch a Kickstarter, and you're like, nah, I don't think it'll fund, don't launch that Kickstarter. Yeah, you if should, you believe you in the product, only only launch a Kickstarter right. you think will fund. If you believe in the product that you're making, you're like, okay, I think this product's a good one, but I'm not sure if this Kickstarter will fund. Great, do more work on the product, do more work on the Kickstarter, do more marketing and advice, but launch a Kickstarter going. This Kickstarter is going to fund. I've done all the things, and then if you've done all the things and you're confident it will fund, and it doesn't fund, don't make the thing. Yeah, you if you've and done you, all the things right, something. yeah, right. If you've done all the things right and you've got your audience and everything, and you still can't make it a Kickstarter fund, that's it. That's, that's mm-hmm. the message. So we are confident that this Kickstarter will fund. If this Kickstarter doesn't fund, we're asking for $50,000 in this Kickstarter. If this Kickstarter does not hit that mount, we will not make Definitive Edition. I say, I, right now, we'll just, we've done all this work. We won't make it. Because if this Kickstarter can't make at least 50K, it, Definitive Edition doesn't exer- deserve to exist. Does that make me like 1% in my soul feel very antsy? Yes, it does. There's a tiny part of me that's like, oh, man. Ugh, what if we only get $38,000 before the Kickstarter ends and we don't make it as Definitive Edition? That feels really terrible, but I am so confident that that's really not going to happen. consider that, and now I'm in, I feel can't bad. think about anything else. Feel bad. So. Feel bad. But the, the question right. is like, okay, but with uh, you know, if the Kickstarter doesn't meet your expectations in terms of fundraise, many people go into Kickstarters hoping this like, well, but we expect it to make two hundred thousand dollars, so we're only asking for twenty thousand dollars, but we expect it to do this giant thing. Calm down. That is also a bad approach to Kickstarters. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend you put your funding level where you need your funding level to be. And if your Kickstarter funds with fifty one thousand dollars, great, you've got fifty one thousand dollars. Make the thing and go forward. If your Kickstarter funds with five hundred thousand dollars, amazing, you made five hundred thousand dollars. Do a better job making this thing and have some more future plans i will yeah. uh, like but but 
in terms of what our expectations, my, our expectations are that we'll launch a Kickstarter on May th- on March 30th. We'll ask for $50,000. We'll have two pledge levels, one at $50 and one at something more. We've talked about those. And that we'll run the Kickstarter for like 20 something days. Our expectation is that it will fund, and it will probably fund early on. My expectation is that it will fund sometime in the first week of the Kickstarter. That is my expectation. My more solid belief than that is that it will fund during the course of the Kickstarter. How much higher than that will it go? Any amount is great. I will be thrilled if this Kickstarter makes $51,000. I will be much more thrilled if it makes $500,000. What do I think is going to happen? Somewhere in between. Really thrilled if it makes $10 million. Get the word out. Love it. But but (laughs) like a lot of people put a lot of like weird hopes and dreams into weird parts of Kickstarters and just don't. Just don't. And something that we're intentionally not doing, I would say, with this Kickstarter is we're not trying to maximize the end dollar amount on the Kickstarter. Uh, which is something that, like, it's very easy to fall into the trap of, like, well, you've got to add more stuff so that people give you more money. And, like, but, like, do we've you all know? seen it. Like, people give you some money and they, they give you enough money to make the thing mm-hmm. and you're good, right? So we, we kind of fell into that trap a bit with Oblivion, which made yeah. it take a long time to deliver. And we're not going to fall into that trap again. So everything's done. We're going to not yeah. add on to it. And... Right. and then, in terms of other expansions beyond the core game, like obviously we're planning them and starting to work on them. And our expectation is that the Kickstarter will fund, make at least fifty thousand dollars, and then the game will sell decently in distribution after that. But like, if it if the game doesn't, fund, or if the game does fund, but then sells very poorly in distribution after that, or something like, there's things that could happen yep. where it would not be the right business call for us to make expansions. If Adam and I both die, that's also true. Sentinels and Multiverse will have a very hard time continuing as a product. Yeah, that's really true. If just one of us die, then maybe like it's going to have a really hard time and it's not going to do very well and like it's going to be tricky. But if maybe both like of... squeak it through. Yeah, yeah. but I... if both of us oh, die, boy. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that I would. I would carry on without you. I don't think I would do it. Oh, you're Aww. so sweet. I would. I would be like, nope. I got to walk away from this. I got to do something else. Yeah. I would just hire a bunch of better artists. Adam. No, I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> sorry. After you were so nice and <laughs> heartfelt, I had to be a dick. Um, <laughs> sorry. A I, I'm not trying to um, be like mushy or heartfelt. I'm just saying that I don't. I. I don't think that I would continue doing it. Yeah. Like there, right. there's no one else I want to work on this with, and yeah. I would just go work on something else. That's, yeah. yeah that the trick sense. is that like. I would want to make sure that we could deliver the things that you and I had promised people. And so I would try to like, I wouldn't want to just walk away. I'd want, I'd want to try to cap things off in a way to be like this. We're capping this off in a way that it like remembers Adam appropriately. And then I would write a very nice letter to the people and say, sorry, we can't continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just plan on not dying. Yeah. All right. All right. I Good. will never die. Problem solved. Yeah. Same. I promise that I will never die. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Chris, anything to add? Uh, I make no such promises. I'm older than all of you. Put together. <laughs> the letter continues. Um, That's just not true at all. No, it's true. This is likely an apples to oranges comparison. But would you equate the value of bringing a collection into a game as being equal to the value an Oblivion reward gave a hero once they earned it? <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't think it's quite as strong. I don't but... think it's quite as strong as a reward as a as an oblivion reward because you use the collection once and it's gone, whereas oblivion yeah. rewards hang around. Um, yeah, yeah. Could you tell us the difficulty rating of each of the villains and roughly what the number means? No. If that's too big of an ask, I will settle for Omnitron. Too bad. Omnitron was often my <laughs> go-to villain for teaching new players because he was fairly straightforward. Had enough HP, the games working against him would go on long enough to give a feel for how the game really worked without being a Kosh Buddha long. All his new hardware has me worried now, though. No, um, I am not going to share any of the hero complexity, villain difficulty, or environment peril numbers yet, but that is all going to be information that comes out between now and the end of the Kickstarter one way or another. So I'm excited to talk about those things in the future. I don't, I am not ready to delve into that stuff, and so even revealing just a little bit will begin. Uh, yeah, I don't think Omnitron's a good first-time villain, though, either. Like the the flipping back and forth every time is too complex. A, oh, but a, now it's different, Adam. Dang. The way that because it, it flips yeah. back and forth every time, but now it's this really interesting cycle where when it's flipped to its fabricate side, it's like I'm building, I'm preparing, I'm not attacking you. 
you're fine over right, there. But like, I'm just no, getting I, ready. Right, but it's it's a non-conventional mechanic, whereas like Baron Blade is still very straightforward. Right, Baron Blade is like, yeah, the, the ideal first game. I, yeah, I'd yeah. say that just because the the new Omnitron doesn't have any one shots, you want to yeah, it's not a good first uh, game. Avoid that it's a first game. Right, I yeah, think it's a good early game, I'm but saying. it's not a good first game. The thing yeah. that I really like about the Omnitron is that in most cases, the really big, mean, terrible stuff it does, you see coming up. You see coming up maybe one or two turns in advance, and you're like, well, that sure is going to happen. It's sure going to do a bunch of terrible stuff to us. What can we do about it? Mm. Nothing. Robots. Like the robots well, sometimes today. the answer is nothing, but like, <laughs> yeah. get good. Uh, and finally, if it hasn't been shared yet, does Bebot still look more like a Hornet, Adam? Yep. Yes, definitely. Thank you for your time. I hope this letter didn't end up being too long. Brian. Thank you for your letter, Brian. All right. I have a letter from Russ uh, who writes, Hey, folks, I'm so excited for the Definitive Edition. The art is amazing, except the 90s art, but I've never really liked art from comics of that time anyway. Hot fired. He does a little winky face, so I think maybe he's he's just teasing us. Oh, man. Oh, man. Man. We love you so much. So, like, there are some... (laughs) artist pastiche things that i do like specific style homages that i are lightning right that i are are for that are artists that i don't like but nevertheless left an impact on comics they're an important artist of that era yeah um and so you you'll you'll see some of that one art of from that artist in the game yeah uh unless it's like oh this is another card from that issue then i gotta do that artist again Um, never do that issue again (laughs) Uh, The improvements to gameplay are impressive and fun, and I'm glad you took advantage of the opportunity to build up the flavor of the decks given the near decade of digging into and refining the details around your characters and their stories. I did have a curiosity question, though. Will the Definitive Edition come with prints? I am probably one of the few folks who actually appreciate the prints from the original game, and I would love getting prints for Definitive Edition. I'm going to interrupt you right there. I like that you say, will it come with prints? I'm one of the few people that wants the prints. That's the problem. Yeah. The majority of people, a lot of people are like, a, a lot of people are like, why did you bother sending me these things? I'm annoyed. The majority of people right. do not care at all. And then some people really like the prints. Right. We're better off. And we've talked about this before. And I don't know the best way to go about it. Finding some way to do like yeah. prints from our website or like you can find a card and click the thing and get a print. Like print that's a demand somehow. Right. We'd love to do right. something like that someday. It's a whole system we would have to set up though. Right. And like, and th- I know there is a way that you like, click it and it auto prints at the printer just like okay right. it, like immediately on ordering then you just have to send it out right but it's it's like a whole setup thing that we just haven't right yeah time but, to do because we're making the, games but definitive edition will not come with art prints uh it's Sorry it's uh, yet another one of those things that was that ended up being like uh oh you can only get it this way and not that way and it's annoying and some people like them and most people <gasps> don't care it's like okay all right all right yeah uh but russ if you want an art print of a certain card you let me know and i'll uh having said that i have all the original prints hanging on my office wall along with the Oblivion poster and some other Sentinels-related art I've accumulated. But I'm kind of out of room, so I'm going to have to do some planning if I need to make space for more. See, we're doing you a favor by not sending you more art prints. This is for you. Right. We're like, oh, no, your office is full. It's a bad idea. We We can't have more prints. Just for Russ's office. I think it'll be a FAQ on the Kickstarter. Are you having prints, art prints for this Kickstarter? And the answer is no, because Russ's office is full. Uh, I love it. I actually really like that. Yeah, let's leave it. Let's leave it. Uh, Very nice. Oh, uh, I do. I've got a a, a letter here. It's from CNV. Good day, Team GTG. You have said that critical events will be used to introduce villain variants. Some of the classic variants made villains less difficult than the base version. Do you have an in-house nickname for less critical events? No. There are basically only three. <laughs> the, three, the Matriarch events. Freedom 5 Annual 2, Murder Most Foul, a Biomancer plot with fake Triarch and the breakout where 1K Gallo's curse kicks in and her birds attack her. Heroic <laughs> Infinitor playstyle question mark. I don't know what all, any of those words mean. Uh, Can you say if one will be the base definitive edition and one in the Dark Watch set? Nope. Can't say. Cool. We know from the lore regarding the card. So hold on, hold on, ma- hold on. Okay, Paul, you Go never gave me a chance to answer the first question. You asked no, the first okay. question, then you moved on to the second question. 
the first question is no, there's not an in-house nickname for less critical events because there isn't. There's there's events and there's critical events, and events mm-hmm. will tell you stories from the world of Sentinel Comics, and critical events will tell you stories from the world of Sentinel Comics. Critical events are all harder though, right? They're all critical. Yeah, they're all critical. They're, they're all well. Critical. You have advan- you have advantages going into them, but correct? Critical. They're all critical. Yeah. All right, are you ready for the last paragraph? I guess. Yes. <laughs> we know from the lore regarding the card bottom of the ninth in the Champion Studios deck that Assistant Editor Month was a thing in Sentinel's publishing. Mm-hmm. We also know that the Skinwalker Gloomweaver story was cut short by editorial demand. Will there be a third type of event for things that are less a specific storyline but more meta-publishing narrative, such as win 10 games in a row with Benchmark as the first hero? He is the new standard, after all. <laughs> no. If we want to do a publishing, a meta-event of some sort, we can, but it would either be an event or a critical event. Well, that's the end. We have lots of cool that's things in question. store. That's not one of them. <laughs> The idea of like win ten games in a row with benchmark as a first hero doesn't like there's no you story can just component. Do that, challenge that. That's, that sounds like a, yeah, that sounds like an achievement. Like yeah. yeah, we're not planning on putting out like a video game style achievement thing. Yeah. All right, last letter from advance, and then we'll go to the chat one final time. Chris, take it away. All right, this is another question from CNV. Good day, Christopher, Adam, and Chris Burton. No, Paul, no you can take a yeah, Get the okay, hell out, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I can well, just sit here and not answer questions. <laughs> well, I was the one that first asked about Chris Burton joining for an episode or two, so I should try and ask something. For Definitive Edition, is there any new art or flavor text that you pitched to Christopher and Adam? Not that I can recall. Um, no, you that... asked for the art for the cork drive translocator to make sure it had like some sort of like laser gun or right. something on it. Yes, that was a request of yours. Uh-huh. Um, most of your stuff came in uh, mechanically, though. Right, of yes. course. Um, and so, like, w- the the process was Christopher and I went through the spreadsheet of a hundred percent of the cards, talked about the art and lore on all of them, and then they they talked about mechanical stuff after we had done our first pass thing. Right. So it um, was really really useful because by the time it came to me and Christopher poking at things and making like design suggestions off bouncing ideas off of each other. We already had a list of here's all of Adam's art. Here's mm-hmm. all of the flavor text that we're thinking yeah. of mm-hmm. what works for that. Yep. And obviously we could tweak small things, but like you don't want Adam to have to redo huge swaths of art because right. that makes the Adam sad. Right. And, and, and there were a few little things where things yeah. had to be tweaked or an art had to be mm-hmm. changed, but it was like, a single digit number of things. And that's what you want. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You could have had him change all the small things. In all honesty, usually when Christopher and I are working together, we end up agreeing like 90% of the time. And that 10% of the time where we disagree, it's almost universally for the best because that's where the good stuff happens. Yeah. That's, that's where, that's where things happen that are exciting. Yep. Yep. Uh, he continues, Christopher has gone on at length about refined menswear and melee weapons. Do you have any non-Sentinels related interests that you could tell us about? Uh, this is mainly just an excuse to hear your great speaking voice. I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you there. Fantastic. I don't know if you've heard Chris Burton, but people love your voice. The spirit Mm -hmm. spotlights, the most common comment on the spirit (laughs) spotlights is when are you going to do more of these? We want spirit spotlights. But the second most common uh, comment is, wow, your voice, whoever's doing this, their voice is really great. So I I like to call it my NPR voice because it's like, welcome to KSNTLs. It's time to talk about Sentinels, the multiverse and some smooth jazz. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but, what are your interests? What, do you, uh, are you a I, human being outside of work? I, I do have a lot of interests outside of work, uh, mainly baking and a just awful lot of making of things that are bad for me. I, I make desserts. Uh, I make pies. <laughs> I, I have uh, pizza crusts cooling in the refrigerator because New York pizza is the best style. Um, when you said and... that you make an awful lot of things, you said baking, and I make an awful lot of things that are bad for me. So, like, yeah, I, I thought, thought those were like separate things. You're like, I do a lot of baking, <laughs> and then I make meth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I I do a ton of baking and yeah. cooking. Uh, that, that that honestly is my main interest outside of work, um, especially now that 
the pandemic has made it so that I am inside my house 90% of the time. And the other 10% of the time is going out to get ingredients for cooking. Hmm. Um, you just have this delivered. What's the, no. Once the panoply no. is over, we can all engage in other activities. Uh, and then, you know, I, I do a lot of art stuff like uh, just creative writing and, and occasional miniature painting. But yeah. So I, I am a human outside of work with human interests. You have a cat? I have a cat. She's right here. Mm -hmm. She's wonderful. Sometimes, the Nerf human, gun. sometimes you and I play cooperative video games. It's true. It's true. And sometimes I just play uh, video games on my own that I like the stories of because story video games are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yes, that is that is what I do. And finally, what is a Braith White and are they in the Diamond Book of Monsters? <laughs> they are uh, very, very polite and... Um, distinguished whites that died and are just determined to make sure that everybody in the barrow is having a good time. <laughs> right. the, they're basically the butlers of ghosts. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Can't go somewhere. laughs> all right. Thank you all for your letters. Let's go to the chat and finish things up here and then call it a day on this longest bullpen ever. <laughs> um, all right. So there is a question uh, from Velvet Isis. Who asks? Who writes? Uh, Apologies if this has already been asked, but are there any clever nods to letters page frequenters? Anything from Cooltopia? Say uh, first off, I want to say welcome, Velvet Isis. You are the newest member of the Patreon. Oh, yeah, I know this because you just joined as we were doing this recording halfway through. So greetings and welcome. Uh, yeah. Also, um, clever nods to letters page frequenters like Cooltopia. I, d I don't uh, think so. So um. right, like I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for the reader. You know, like, right. is there anything overt? Nothing so overt, but there's certainly things that people will recognize as like, ah, this has come about because of the letters page's existence. And right. I think like, that there's more. It's more likely to have that stuff in the the history of Sentinel Comics book because that's, that's I mean, about that'll definitely the metaverse, be right? Yeah. Also, um, in the digital in the Handelabra uh, enhanced edition game where we did the dialogue bits, uh, there's Wager Master says something about the animal verse. Yeah. Variants. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I think but, when I was but that's not letters page that, frequenters. To... That's letters page content. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, Twistsome would like to know. Uh oh. Um, will Will Andy Aronson still be in Chairman's deck? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. Who's Chairman? Chair? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know who. I don't know who cha called Chairman. Yeah. No. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Paul, do you want to take the Ensign question the at 107? One? Yeah. Uh, Ensign asks, I understand that this might be a too far in the future question, but could we potentially see things from beyond Oblivion in the card game for a definitive edition? Or is that still a hard stopping point? Things like a beacon of Muerto deck or a broken city environment or a Nexus Primalis. I don't know what Oblivion beyond is. Beyond Oblivion! There's no, how, it, no be, such it, deck. As how, do you, how do you get beyond Oblivion, though? Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that 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 the answer to your question, the straight answer to your question is that is way too far in the future question. Yeah, yeah. and like sure, I didn't know if you wanted me to ask it. No, no, and I and, well, and I did want you to yeah. ask it because I want to be I want to be clear. Like people are going to keep asking these things, and that's a fair thing to ask. But we are just not gonna, we're not ready to talk about that stuff yet because we're not ready to definitively say yes or no. And yeah. so, like, feel free to ask whatever questions you want. Don't be disappointed when our answers are we can't we have no answer for you yet on that. Yeah. So it's better than a hard no. Consider it that way. Uh, I would almost say that we should switch and have Chris uh, have Braithwaite read the Velvet Isis question. And oh, sure. Go ahead. Ben. Uh, so yes, Velvet Isis asks, "How do we become playtesters for future expansions?" Well, it was an arcane answer, ritual. <laughs> yes, it, it is called uh, sending me a message, either on the forums or at Burton at Greater Than Games, or uh, on Discord or any other. Uh, method of your choice and then he begins the arcane ritual yes right. and... which i will not speak of for it is not send... for, for the ears of the uninitiated you will have to send a vial of your blood so contact your local um blood FedEx or ups and see what they, they have special containers that you have to ship yeah. biomaterials yeah. in yeah. right we want to make so... sure we do everything legally and safely right, right. Yeah. yeah except for the felonies that we do well, yeah, obviously. except for those. We want to do, those are, we those do them safely, safe, but, but not legal. Not legal. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, the worm sponsor writes, do we know anything about the about the in-the-box insert for Definitive Edition? Will there be nice organized slots for everything, or is that beyond the scope of a $60 box? That is beyond the scope of a $60 box. It is a small box for tokens. You put the tokens in the small box. Yeah. Um, that said, what I'm going to do with my small box, don't tell anybody, is I'm going to take pieces of cardboard and I'm going to put them in there to make little dividers. Oh, yeah. You can do that too at home, but don't tell anybody. It's a secret. <laughs> Uh, Adam, uh, clockwork at one fourteen. What one fourteen? That's one seventeen. Yeah, that's what I am too, Adam. Ah, uh, Mr. Clockwork asks: um, Are there any Nemesis pairings who have changed? Not yet. Not yet. Although there are some in the events Nemesis pairings that you might not expect. That's true. Yes. So yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> so for me is it the ensign question at 122 probably probably yes yeah. okay good ensign asks regarding prints would gtg allow people to have the digital files and print them out at places like walgreens slash kinkos would gtg give that permission for personal use um here's the yeah thing. there's some issues that arise with that i think yeah uh, in general it is so much work. Like sometimes people email us and say, can I use this for personal use? And they have a really good story. Like I'm getting married or want to do this or whatever. And on a case by case basis, we'll often say yes if they ask us. But the thing is that it's only because we don't get asked very often. Because it's an individual saying yes, then Katie or someone has to respond and say yes right away. And it takes a chunk of time. And if we get, uh, flooded by a whole bunch of questions like that, we'd have to change our policy to no because of the amount of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. That being said, what we want to do, something Christopher alluded to before, like we have dreams and ambitions mm -hmm. that we would just make it automated mm -hmm. so that you could automatedly, inexpensively order prints of stuff and shirts of stuff and hats of stuff and whatever you wanted. Mm -hmm. We need to get a new website first, which has taken us years of saying we want a new website. Which and it's more important than... This, yeah, we're just like, we're making progress on like one third of our website is now new, right? After having talked about it for six years. So this is ambition, an ambition that we have eventually. Uh, but after we get all, all the way new website, I don't know. We'll see. So it's kind of. Oh. Hey, Trevor, cut this because it's not good radio. But uh, everybody go look at 124 where Russ has posted his. Oh wow! His, oh, his wall, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing, Russ. That's yeah. really amazing. Yeah, that's dang. Pretty incredible. Cool, cool, cool. Wow. Yeah. You have the original right. art prints and the enhanced edition art prints there. Yeah, that's crazy. That's amazing. That's. Mm. You must really <laughs> like us. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh all right wow all right um all right. are we good are we caught up i think we're good yeah i think so i, I think we're good oh no uh on your cards right oh uh Daryl, I thought that the question was asked was about the box that's inside the box, the token box that's inside the bigger box, the, what was inside that. Um, Amelia, what, did, what save did I make? Did I make a save? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's finish up. No, I want to make sure that we... Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, um... Okay, Trevor, so you can cut, cut all that stuff, and I will do an exit here. All right. Thank you all so much for all of your questions. Thank you. Pause. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you very much. Thanks, as always, to our patrons. We could not do this without you, especially those of you at the collector level who have been with us this entire time in the chat. Thank you so much. Big thanks to Chris Burton, to Braith White for being here. Thank you so much for being a part of this, helping this out. And thank you so much for making Definitive Edition what it is. We definitely uh, had a better product as a result. Um, 
of the of the uh, work that you've done and the work you've done with the play testers and all that. Um, uh, and medium thank thanks you to Paul so for much being for here. having me and, and <laughs> also for hiring me. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. We're sorry for that. For hiring you. <laughs> so I'm glad you like it. <laughs> uh, yeah. You do regret it constantly. Oh no, not constantly. <laughs> I thought you'd be like, we're sorry that you have to deal with it. That's, that's what, that's, yeah, that's what Adam meant. meant. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. It's it's terrible that I think this is an improvement. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's yeah, we're, fair. We're, so, we're more sorry about your prior job yeah. that, that you think this is this is great. <laughs> yeah. So but, but hey, we're glad you're sticking around and you're pretty soon moving very close to my house. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be weird. Oh, you should go look in his window all the time. <laughs> Please, please don't give him ideas. <laughs> I would say you should look at Christopher's window. <laughs> oh, if if Chris fair. if Chris comes and looks at my window, it's more likely that he is upset by what he sees than I am upset by him peeping <laughs> in my window. <laughs> the thing that's going to be weird for Chris is when he comes to look at my window and he walks out to his front door to see me standing there looking in his window. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks for sticking with us for this long, 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 long Thank you, long, Paul long and Braithwaite, for joining journey. us this week. Thank yeah. you for having me on your podcast. Yeah. Fun yeah. as always. Thank you. Yeah. We'll catch you next time.